Uh, 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 uh. Oh yeah, brother. What is going on? It's your boy, Fat Samurai Guy, back again with another live Q&A, baby. That's right, gonna be talking movies and pop culture, hanging out with all of you movie-loving badasses, baby. That's right. And I got some Arrow Blu-ray movie reviews today. That's right. I gotta, gotta keep you guys in the loop of what's out there and what is awesome. But speaking of awesome, who do we have up in the heezy? Yes. And if you're wondering about... <laughs> If you're wondering about, well, hold on, that exercise ball, Samurai Guy is not using that. <laughs> They're like, man, that Samurai Guy using the exercise ball in the back. No, if I tried to sit on that thing, it would explode. Yes. So Lady Fat's doing her thing. You know what I'm saying? So if you guys are curious, what that, what's that doing there? I forgot to move it before I started live, but it's okay because we family. We family. It's all good. Who do we have up in what what who do we have up in the heat in the in the in the heezy here? We got Tyler, certified badass channel member, in the house. We got Heather in the house. Oh yes, yes, I am I have I have recovered. I'm feeling a lot better than I was last week. It was ridiculous. Samurai guy, if you guys are not aware, I was sick and I had the fever for the whole week and it came out of nowhere. And it wasn't COVID. It was weird, because I I did the home COVID test and I was fine. But for some reason, like I was completely fine Sunday, completely fine Sunday afternoon. And then by Sunday, Sunday evening, I was feeling weird. And then Monday morning, I woke up with, you know, cold sweats. I was shivering. I was hot. I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> so, yeah, so Samurai Guy was down for the count. So there was absolutely no content last week, but I appreciate you guys looking out for your brother. Lady Danish in the house, that's right. Jake Hall, more certified badass channel members. All oh, the fire has started. Michael Gonzalez is bringing the fire. He's bringing the fire. That's right. That's right. We're starting the ruckus, baby. We, oh, shit. We got Sean 99 in the house. We got Eric in the house. We got Mr. Biggity Bones. That's right. We got Caitlin. What is going down? And we have Brandon in the hazing. Yes. Uh, it's great to see everybody today. Yes. And cheers. We're going to do the early cheers today. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We have one of them Red Bull fuses. <laughs> Fusions. <laughs> so cheers. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with Sam Samurai Guy today. Oh, yeah. And uh, cutting the music. <laughs> Perfect timing. We got Robert in the house, the Dojo Army. That's right. What is going on? It's wonderful to see everybody here today. Yes, yes. I'm going to do some Blu-ray reviews, and uh, after the Blu-ray reviews are done, we're gonna we're gonna hang out, and talk movies and pop culture. You know what we do here. That's right. That's right. We have fun. That's the whole point. Oh yeah. So you know what? Let me, we got enough badasses here now. Let's go ahead and start the reviews. So first of all like to give a, a shout out, a big shout out to Arrow Video and MVD Entertainment Group for sending Samurai Guy some Blu-ray uh, review discs right here. And we got Warriors 2, Electric Boogaloo, and the Killing Game Trilogy. So we're going to get into that. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And uh, yeah, it's great seeing everybody here. Golden's Journey. What's going on? Good to see you. All right. All right. Yeah, we got enough badasses here. Let's go ahead and start the ruckus. Are we going to jump right into it, baby? Hmm. Which one do I want to do first? Hmm. You know, it's funny because both of these movies, I like to do when the movies of when they come out by the release date. But both of these films, uh, at least a lot of them, are, you know, were dated for 1978. <laughs> so they're kind of the same. So I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna go jump right into it. I know, I know which one we're gonna start with first. So Heather is playing Grant uh, Grand Theft Auto Five on PS4. All right, I'm good at dying. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're a lot better than me if I started playing Grand Theft Auto. I'm playing Grand Theft Auto in five billion years, so I'm sure you're a lot better than Samurai Guy. But yeah, let's go ahead and start these Arrow Blu-ray reviews here, and let's kick it off with the Game Trilogy. Here we go.
Yeah, that's right. He's badass. He's cool. That's right. So we're going to get into the game trilogy. So I want to bring it up here so that way you guys can see with me all of the wonderful features here. We'll look at it together. Yes. Hold on. Let me uh, bring it up here. And uh, yeah, I'll just um, let me put me down here so that way you guys can see a little bit more of the background. So the game trilogy. Uh, yeah, on sale right now. You have three movies in this one box set here. Twenty eight dollars right now. Like this is a this is definitely a sale. That's right. But yeah, let's just go over the product overview and the features, and then I'll give you my thoughts uh, on the films here. So here we go. So made at the end of the nineteen seventies, Toru Morukawa's game trilogy launched actor Yasaku Matsuda. Uh, as the toy tough guy for a new generation, Matsuda was the definitive screen icon of the 1980s until his car career was tragically cut short by cancer at the age of 40. Following his Hollywood debut in Ridley Scott's underrated film, Black Rain, and I may be doing a review on Black Rain in the future. And this career defining, hold on, let me scroll down a little bit more here. Traffic, Matsuda is Shohei Narumi, an ace excuse me, an ice cool hitman, a few words, a steely trigger finger, and a heart of stone hired in the most dangerous game by a company bidding for a lucrative government air defense contract to take out the competition. In the killing game, Narumi finds himself caught in the midst of violent Yakuza gang warfare while his own brutal past catches up with him in the form of two beautiful women still bearing the emotional scars of his past assignments. In the execution game, Narumi falls for a mysterious saloon bar maiden who may or may not be part of the same shadowy underworld organization as the rival hitman he is employed to rub out. Released for the very first time outside of Japan. So let me know in chat right now, if guys, have you ever even heard uh, of these films? A lot of people have not heard of these movies. Uh, but so yeah, first time released outside of Japan with their cool blue cinematography by Nagisha Oshima, collaborator Saizo Sengen, and a sultry score by jazz legend Yuji Ono. Murakawa's masterful set of films raised the bar for the Japanese action movie to new height so here you go guys product features uh high definition 1080p uh the picture quality is flawless for all three movies these these movies look beautiful uh original loss of mono japanese soundtracks newly translated english subtitles reversible sleeve featuring original and newly commissioned artwork by tony stella double-sided fold-out poster featuring original and newly commissioned artwork illustrated collector's booklet featuring new writing on the films by Haley Scanlon and Dimitri Gani. All right, there we go. The first disc right here, The Most Dangerous Game. Uh, brand new audio commentary by Chris Pagali and Mark Walco, The Action Man, a 30 minute interview with director Toru Murakawa. Original Japanese trailer, image gallery. The second film has audio commentary by Earl Jackson and Jasper Sharp. Audio commentary on The Execution Game by Tom Mez. And remembering uh, Yasaku Matsuda, in, an interview with you, excuse me, <laughs> Yutaka Oki, film critic and personal friend of Matsuda. Game changer, an interview with the execution game screenwriter Shoichi Maruyama. That was a really good uh, feature, and I enjoyed that. Original Japanese theatrical trailers for both films, image galleries for both films. All right, let's see if there's any other extra good news there. But yeah, a lot of stuff featured in here. And here's some of the artwork on the inside. It's really badass. That is some cool looking badassity right there. So yeah, that's the other artwork on there. All right. So now it's time to give my thoughts on these movies. And <laughs> something, I, I can't wait to get to it, but something about these films blew my mind. And I was very surprised uh, with them. Hold on a second. Let me catch up the, with comments here. So, uh, will we get a flash movie review? Yes. Trevano at some point, uh, me and lady fat will be reviewing. We're, we're kind of late with a lot of reviews. So we're going to do our usual like live movie review catch up and we'll just go through everything. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be talking about flash at some point. What's up, Brian? How you doing, brother? Good to see you. Yes. Good to see you. All right. And Sean looks pretty cool. Okay. So here's the thing, guys. All three of these movies, they're not 
nonstop action thrill rides. Don't go. I mean, there's some melee fighting. There's some shooting here and there. But don't go into these movies expecting like John Woo type of action. Okay, it's not a nonstop a action thrill ride type movies. Think more of um, intrigue, betrayal, gangster flick, assassin movie. More of more of with a Gogol Thirteen vibe. If you if you understand that, right? So that's kind of what uh, these movies are. So I got some screenshots here, and then I, and then I'm going to talk about what blew my mind <laughs> with all three of these movies. Uh, but yeah. Picture quality is phenomenal. Uh, the main character, he is a trip. He is a he is a trip, man, because he's like a straight up badass G. Like you didn't want to fuck with this dude. Okay, he's a bad ass, right? But then he has these moments where he's very comedic and very country bumpkin esque, uh, which was I wasn't expecting. <laughs> like when you're first introduced to this guy. He loot. He's drunk and he's playing a game of cards and he loses all his money and then he gets beat up and he gets thrown out. And I was like, I know that's not our that's not our hero, is it? our antagonist, is it? I mean, protagonist. And it was so. Yeah, he 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 he's a straight up cool, very correct, uh, charismatic, badass character. But uh, he he has them. He has these unexpected comedic moments, physical comedy, bumbling moments. I was not expecting, but this was tripping me out. So. Uh, for those of you that are uh, familiar with one of the greatest anime, in my opinion, Cowboy Bebop and the movie, which is awesome, uh, one of my favorites of all time, uh, a lot of people were telling me that <laughs> these movies and the way the main actor, you know, Rest in Power, played this character uh, was one of the influences uh, for Spike Spiegel from Cowboy Bebop. And I, I was seeing it throughout this, through all three of these movies. I mean, look at this shot right here, guys. Look at this. It's fucking it's it's fucking live action Spike Spiegel. Jesus Christ. Like, seriously. I mean, look at this one. Smoking the cigarette. I mean, it's Spike Spiegel, man. Like, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. I had a lot of fun with that, but I could see what people were talking about. Uh, especially the way he was playing uh the character. So Severia, what's going on? What's going on? Yes, yes, I'm I'm kicking right now. Yes, yeah, yeah. Spike Spiegel, you guys. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, he goes on these missions. He's basically a gun for hire. And, uh, you know, there's betrayal involved. The, the, the first movie was pretty straightforward with a few comedic elements. The second film had a lot more comedy because he had almost like a sidekick that was kind of like obsessed with him and he was like his hero and he always wanted to be with uh, the lead. <laughs> so there was a lot more comedy in the second movie, but the second movie definitely had more of a Yo Jimbo vibe. Like he's in the middle. You have the two rival gangs kind of thing going on, trying to outdo each other. The third film is out of all three is the most serious and the darkest out of all three. I don't remember any comedy at all uh, in the third movie. It's very dark in tone. It even opens up very bleak, violent, and dark, where the uh, our, our lead wakes up. It's not really a spoiler, but our lead wakes up in a dark warehouse, and he he breaks free, and he's trying to escape, and he takes out these dudes, and he, and he finds out that it's all part of a game, and they're just testing him. Uh, yeah, so the third movie was uh, the, the, the darkest uh, of the three. Uh, but yeah, I enjoyed all three of these films. I highly recommend uh, you guys check them out. If you guys have the uh, Arrow app. You can watch them. I believe they're on there right now. Uh, but, uh, I, you know, these are a purchase, uh, definitely, especially when you get all the extra trimmings that we went over with the special features and the booklets and all that kind of stuff and the commentary. Uh, but, yeah, just uh, again, but I'm, 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 I'm revving up to what blew my mind. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So hold on a second. Hold on. What's up, Mr. King Palma? How you doing? Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about Extraction 2 at some point. We'll get to it. Uh, the next action film autopsy with Rick Myers. Uh, I'll make sure I'll, I'll watch it by then. So, uh, But yeah, here we go, guys. More Cowboy Bebop uh, references here. I mean, look at this. <laughs> I mean, this is insane. It's, uh, it's uncanny. It is uncanny. Uh the lead actor and the character he played and even the clothes he wears uh, definitely is, you can totally see it inspired Spike Spiegel from Cowboy Bebop. Uh, but yeah, uh, definitely enjoyed the character straight up G straight up badass. 
Uh, sometimes not the nicest guy, especially when it comes to the ladies. Um, but uh, he just don't he don't he don't he don't like to mess around. You know what I mean? That's it. All right, now I'm gonna get to what blew my mind with all three of these films. I'm watching these movies, and if you compare it to the stuff now, it'll look tame in comparison. But the fact that all three of these movies attempted, tried, and succeeded, in my opinion, blew my mind. So this is what I'm talking about, guys. Keep in mind, this is the goddamn 70s. <laughs> this is 1970 or late 70s. And I'm watching the movie, and all of a sudden we have this action sequence, right? Shooting, people getting fucked up, stunts, cool shit, right? And then all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm noticing, I'm like, hey, the, the the camera's still following the lead actor. The camera's still following him going around the corners, going into rooms, coming back out, going into hallways, coming back out, shooting this way, going in here. There's, there's shots through the glass. He comes back out. He The camera's following him, going up the stairs. And I'm like, holy shit. Is this one of the earliest times of a one-take filmed action shootout sequence like this blew my mind guys i was not expecting this at all now you think about it right you think of old boy the hallway fight you think of uh the 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 the, the chase sequence in children of men right they were like the early pioneers if you will if you want to give them credit for that that kind of kicked off the one take action sequence genre of films that is the norm nowadays and and you know i like that kind of stuff even now like if it's done well if it's done right you know i still enjoy it but dude this is the 70s guys this is the 70s and every each one of these films has a section where it's one take and the camera is following our lead while he's shooting in rooms going up steps coming down and i'm like there's no cutaways and this blew my mind. I couldn't believe it. I was not expecting this at all. Uh, in the first, um, hold on a second. We'll just catch up to you guys' uh, comments here. The the first uh, movie, it was kind of filmed in a dark, the, the warehouse, well, the, the apartment was dark. But you could tell the camera just sat there and, and filmed everything. Even when he went into other rooms, the camera stayed there. There wasn't any edits. And then the second movie, there was like a hallway shootout. One take. One take. And then the third movie had the most ambitious and longest uh, of the out of all three films with the one take shooting action set piece. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm just, my mind is blown. So I'm trying to figure out, like, how come nobody else is talking about these movies and nobody else is giving these movies credit for starting or at least attempting the one take action shootout set pieces, right? Everyone goes old boy, old boy, old boy, old boy. Everybody wants to do old boy. Uh, let's rewind back to the seventies. <laughs> so these films are special. Uh, they may not be everyone's cup of tea, but I was not expecting that at all. I mean, again, one take action shootout set pieces where the camera does not go. It stays with our lead actors, lead lead actor throughout the whole entire uh, shootout. It really was impressive. Uh, there was a scene uh, in the first film where the the cops, it was like a setup, and the cop, there's this whole army of cops shooting at our lead guy. He was trying to get away. That was pretty intense as well. But yeah, was not expecting that at all. So that's a nice little fun fact. I just want to throw out to you guys, even even with the, the special features, no one's mentioning the one take <laughs> actions in the special features of the goddamn Blu-ray. No one's talking about it. I mean, maybe in the commentary they mention it. But yeah, so it makes you wonder how many old school classic action movies, thrillers, martial art films, maybe even westerns had really did really cool shit with camera work. With action, uh, filming it and the the the, the choreography and the set pieces of it, that was like way ahead of their time. It makes you wonder how many more are out there, 
right? Because there's a lot of people that told me they've never heard of these films. And it blows my mind. So there you go. I had to share that with you guys. So the Killing Game, I mean, the Game Trilogy, uh, yes, highly recommend it. Again, remember, they're not nonstop action throw right type movies. But I was very, very impressed uh, with the one take action shootout stuff. I, no edits. Maybe there was, you could tell they could edit in one spot, maybe one in the third movie, because that was the longest set piece. But yeah, very impressive. Very impressive. So again, I recommend big time the uh, the 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 killing game, killing game, the game trilogy on Blu-ray. Yes, yes, yes. You will enjoy them, Ruben. Yeah, yeah. Let's see, Bobby Reynolds. Thanks again for the super chat, man. <laughs> Buy a table. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Buy a table. Anyway, let's keep on rocking and rolling here. But yeah, the game trilogy, definitely worth checking out. Let me remove this really quickly. And then that way I can bring up the next feature we could talk about. And this is this is a favorite, a favorite of mine. <laughs> there we go. Oh, a class. This is this is OG classic kung fu martial arts movie right here. Let's talk about Warriors 2, baby. Y'all see that kick? Y'all see that kick? Yo, yo, Warriors 2, man. Oh, man, this is awesome. Can't wait to talk about this one. Hold on one second. I'm catching up to comments here. Oh, yeah, Jake Hall just watched it a couple hours ago. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Yes, a lot of people call this Samuel Hung's first classic. Um. Because remember, Samuel Hung did a lot of fight choreography and action design uh, before he became like a huge star himself. He was the sought after guy. He was always playing like the villain or or the thug, thug number two. You know, he played like the second heavy or something like that. But he was always there doing the fight choreography and uh, the action design. And this one, uh, he brought in a little bit of the Wing Chun, just a little bit. Of course, he kind of perfected it a little bit more, and is another classic, one of my favorites, one of my favorites of all time, The Prodigal Son. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> here it goes. Stunts still look better than CGI Kravitz today. <laughs> yes. yes, 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 classic. So yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and I'll show you guys the features of uh, Warriors Two here. Yes, there you go. All right, let me make sure we bring it up, and don't forget, guys. Uh, I put links in both. Uh, the description box below, both links, if you guys want to go straight to Arrow and purchase this stuff. But yeah, uh, you guys are the lucky ones here. You guys get the cool box art, the wonderful artwork. You get a poster in the inside. You get a booklet. I mean, you get all the cool stuff. As a This is the OG poster right here. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, go and uh, talk a little bit about Warriors 2. So here we go. After making his directoral debut with the intense... The Iron Fisted Monk, which is another favorite of mine, and firmly solidifying his worth at Golden Harvest, Samo Hung would be given more creative control behind the camera. Now able to inject more of his own personality, Hung would bring to life the more upbeat yet only slightly less violent <laughs> Wing Chun cl cult classic Warriors 2. Uh, the extremely underrated Casanova Wong from the Shaolin plot, which I highly recommend you guys check that out as well. Uh, he's in this, and he's phenomenal. He leads a simple life working for a local bank. The only complications resulting from trying to give life advice to his friend Fat Chung, played by Sam Hung. Of course, his name's Fat Chung. When Hua discovers a murderous plot to overthrow the mayor and is left for dead, 
Chun urges him to protect himself by learning the formidable style of Wing Chun for the master Leung San. Knockabout's Beardy, played by Leung Gar Yan. Yes, I love Beardy, man. That guy's great. As Hua's skill set grows, his uh, proximity to Leung unknowingly lands him in the crosshairs of the treacherous scoundrels who, pre who previously sought to kill him. Predating the Yip Man uh, films by three decades, as well as Hung's own The Prodigal Son, which has starred Yuan Biao as the younger incarnation of the young son. By a few years, Warriors 2 is one of the earliest films to authentically portray the teachings of Wing Chun while also delivering the kind of kinetic and pulse-pounding fight synonymous with the name Samo Hung. Yes. Product features 2K restorations from the original elements by Fortune Star, both the original Hong Kong theatrical cut and the shorter export cut. So you get two cuts, and the picture is insane, guys. The picture is really good. Like, this is probably the best this movie's ever looked. Uh, you have uh, original lossless Cantonese and Man Mandarin mono audio for the Hong Kong theatrical cut, plus the loss lossless English mono for the export cut. Two choices of English dubbed, oh, excuse me, audio for the Hong Kong theatrical cut, the original export dub. There you go. With Cantonese patches for mass for missing scenes and the newer 5.1 dub created for international DVD presentations. You have optional English subtitles for the Hong Kong theatrical cut, English sub subtitles for the for the export cut. You got commentary, uh, which I highly recommend, but for the Hong Kong theatrical cut by martial arts cinema expert, the master of remaster. You guys know him. He's been on the channel several times. Frank Jang and uh, actor, martial artist, filmmaker Bobby. Samuels and I was watching this with the commentary the other day. I'm sure you guys have seen me post it on the social medias, but um, I was sitting down just I'm like I love hearing the commentary from these guys. These guys are legends, and I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden I hear my name, <laughs> and I'm like, "What the hell?" <laughs> so I was a huge honor just to be uh, mentioned. That was very nice of Bobby and and Frank Jane to give uh, Fat Samurai a little shout out on the commentary of the Blu-ray. So. Very honored for that. And you have another commentary track for the export cut by Mike Leader and Arnie Venema. And you have archival documentary, The Way of the Warrior, The Making of Warriors 2, featuring interviews with Sammo Hong, Beardy, that's right, Feng Hak An, Feng, yeah, that guy is another phenomenal martial arts villain. I love that guy. Casanova Wong and Wing Chun Master Guy Lai. You got an uh, interview with Beardy, Theatrical trailers and a double-sided fold-out poster by artwork by Joe Kim and the reversible sleeve featuring the original and newly commissioned artwork by Joe Kim and a get a booklet with new writing by Jonathan Clemens, Clements and original press materials. And I don't think there's anything else here, but yeah, a lot of good stuff. Definitely uh, worth picking up for all you old school uh, martial arts <clears throat> excuse me, and Kung Fu movie uh, collectors. Yes. So how did I come across Warriors 2? Let's go. Let's see here. Uh, here we go. Zero says, I love the story Scott Atkins told of Samo directing him on the set of the medallion as Scott was scared to hit Jackie Chan, <laughs> but Samo kept yelling at him to hit him harder. Yeah, I saw that interview. That was fun. That was fun. Yes, yes. Uh, let's see here. Uh, thanks again for the Super Chat. Made your table, stored your stuff. And put your things on the table and they disappear from the show odd squad uh bobby again thank you for the super chat i have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> so heather oh there you go that's awesome all right cool let's see uh ruben's got the eureka release and warriors 2 nice the double feature yes yes that was a cool uh uh release as well yes that was awesome chase what's going on yes yes <laughs> all right Okay, so uh, many five billion years ago, samurai, uh, a lot younger, <laughs> fitter samurai guy. I worked for like this shipping company and uh, the boss that we had uh, of, the, of, that, of that department, he, we, he, I found out he loved old school kung fu and martial arts movies, right? So he, because of him, he... Uh, uh, hit me up on two classics. One of them was Master of the Flying Guillotine. I've never heard of it at the time. And he was like, yeah, that's a classic. So I had to try to hunt that down. And I actually found that 
uh, and Warriors 2. He mentioned that too. He said Warriors 2 is one of his favorite old school uh, Kung Fu movies. So I had to hunt, try to hunt that down back in the day, man. Now look, you guys got Eureka, you got Arrow. I mean, you guys are spoiled now. <laughs> so take advantage, you know, keep buying those old school classics so they'll keep remastering new ones, right? Or more of the old school. So <clears throat> he's like, yeah, Warriors 2. I'm like, okay. So there was like this small little comic book store that sometimes had bootleg VHS of series and movies and stuff. So I was, it was like, I was extremely lucky. Uh, I walked in there and they just happened to have a VHS copy of Warriors 2. And I took it home and I was like, this is the perfect late nighter. I got to watch this when it's late. You know, I don't have to worry about working the next day, you know, grab something to drink, some some snacks. I got to watch this late at night in my room and, uh, you know, have fun with it. And that's what I did. And it was the perfect late night movie, man. I could totally see why it was uh, labeled a cult classic. Uh, but I think it's coming slowly coming out of the cult status. And a lot more people are uh, noticing it and enjoying it now. Yes. So let's get into it here. So the again, the, the Blu-ray picture quality is absolutely phenomenal. These are just screenshots, but the Blu-ray picture actually looks better than these screenshots I'm going to show. And Fang playing our main villain is just great. He's like one of my favorite Kung Fu movie villains. He is just so slimy and just <laughs> creepy. <laughs> and again, Casanova Wong, uh, you know, he is Korean, Taekwondo guy. Uh, you didn't see that many uh, casted in Cantonese Kung Fu movies, especially when he didn't speak the language. So he did a great job uh, transitioning from Taekwondo uh, to Wing Chun. Of course, he, you know, he, Samuel knew, you know, Samuel casted Casanova Wong for a reason, you know, got to show off his kicks. So he gets a chance to show off his kicks, but uh, still uh, had to adjust uh, to Wing Chun. But in terms of performance, especially since he didn't uh, speak Cantonese. Uh, he did a great job, but let's, let's talk about Beardy here. Uh, Beardy, I mean, I, Leon Garyan is so good. Uh, we call him Beardy, even though he doesn't have a beard here. And if you guys have seen the movie, this sequence right here is brutal. It is brutal. And that's, <laughs> and uh, Frank Jang and Bobby mentioned it on the commentary that, and I, I know about this, too, because of as many movies I've seen. Samuel's known for having comedy, slapstick comedy, mixed in with something horribly dark and violent at the same time. <laughs> He's known to do that. Uh, I would say when you're a fan of his films, I think 80% of the time, I think Samuel Hung did a great job. Right. But for some other people watching, they may find it jarring. You know what I mean? Like somebody just get horribly stabbed to death. And all of a sudden we got, boom, we got some slapstick comedy over here, right? So for some people not used to that, or Sammo Hung's style, old school style, um, that may be a little jarring. They may be like, what the hell is going on, right? Uh, but <laughs> there is some dark moments in here. And uh, this is one of the best scenes in the film, but I will not spoil it. I will not ruin it for you. But yeah, Fang is just great. And you have uh, Dean here always playing these uh, comedic comedic characters. He's so good at these comedic characters. But yeah, martial arts training sequences on point. Uh, the way the fighting is filmed and edited is how it's supposed to be. You can see all of the action. And one of the most brutal kicks <laughs> in the Kung Fu movie history. I don't know if this is Ewan Biao. I don't think this is Casanova Wong, but this this stuntman on the right, he takes a full-on kick blast, like full power to, to the dome here, to the, straight to the gut. Like, this is like, if, if I ever do a, a fun favorite martial arts kicks video just for fun, the, uh, the kick, this kick right here <laughs> is going, is going on here uh, on, the, on the video, especially... The, the the best kick, which is later. Uh, but yeah, back to, here's the scene I was talking about. Uh, again, no spoilers, uh, but it's so good. But the thing is with Leon Garyan, the more movies you see with him and the, the more like, you know, Legend of a Fighter and just, you know, Thundering Mantis, all these movies. And then you, and then you stop and, and you forget, oh yeah, Beardy, Leon Garyan was not classically trained at all. He did not know any 
martial arts at all. <laughs> and it's insane. But he's such an athletic guy that he was able to learn on set. And he trained on set and he learned on set. And he was so good at being able to copy and mimic what the other stuntmen are doing, especially in the fire choreography. That's why Leon Garyon is a legend. And he learned as he, you know, he learned martial arts as he as he went along. And and who knows, I don't know how many movies this guy has been in. And he's he's still making movies today. But yeah, you forget, you know, that yeah, he doesn't know any martial arts, but he's so good. But again, Casanova Wong, great uh transitioning uh to the Wing Chun style. But you know, again, you gotta throw in them Taekwondo kicks, man. You gotta throw it in. Uh, but I remember, I remember uh the makeup is amazing. <laughs> uh, retro Serial, what's going on, brother? Hey, y'all need to subscribe to Retro Serial right now. Phenomenal channel, uh, phenomenal human being. It's good to see you, brother. And uh, at some point, you know, summer guy be lagging. You know, sometimes I might need a little, a little reminder, a little, little jab in the ribs. Hey, man, let's do a movie review together. Hey, let's do something. <laughs> I'm so busy with interviews and stuff like that. And I just, you know, uh, I haven't uh, collabed with a lot of people, but uh, yeah, man, it's good to see you, man. Good to see you. Uh, but is it like he's kicking him in the crotch? Yeah, pr pretty much. I mean, you get some, uh, <laughs> you get some, uh, there you go. Let's do it. You get some comedic moments in here. But I remember when I first saw the film, I didn't know what to expect. And I watched it on that old crappy VHS. But you know what? I, I embraced that VHS because I couldn't just order it off offline or online. I couldn't just order it or go to the store and get it. There's no arrow video release of it. So I was like, I'm going to enjoy the shit out of this pan and scan. <laughs> and that wasn't even widescreen. VHS. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to watch Warriors 2 Electric Boogaloo. And I remember uh, enjoying Pretty much all of it. Uh, the comedy made me laugh because I'm used to the Samuel Hong comedy, even back then. Uh, but I remember some fight scenes were pretty good and some fight scenes were average. And it was kind of pretty good to average, pretty good to average, pretty good to average. And then, like every classic great kung fu movie in the past that knows what they're doing and knows how to do it right, they will always reward the audience member and when that third act to the finale hit, holy shit, holy shit. I'm sitting on the edge of my bed <laughs> watching this pan and scan VHS tape, not expecting what was to come in that third act to that finale. And I'm just like, Jesus. And just re-watching re it on Blu-ray, I'm just like, they don't make them like this anymore. They just don't. There's some really great martial arts movies now. There's some phenomenal talent now. But there's there, there's, a, there's a time and an era, right? You have the 70s era, 80s era, the 90s era. And this era, it's just, you don't, they don't make it like this anymore. And this third act to a finale, especially when the double-bladed saber warriors show up, when these two guys show up and then eventually they fight Samo. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> like, you have to watch this. It's brief, but watch Samo Hung's movement. Watch their movement. Watch the camera work. Watch the editing. Watch the fight choreography with those. Everybody's got two swords. <laughs> and everybody's just going at it. It is absolutely phenomenal to watch. And I was, again, being blown away. And then... Then going back to uh Heather saying, uh, wonderful makeup, wonderful makeup in this movie. <laughs> there's a reason, a minor spoiler, minor spoiler. There's a reason why Fang's makeup looks like this. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. I don't want to spoil anything else. But uh when the main villain is revealed at the end of the movie, in my opinion, I mean, I love Shaolin Mantis with uh David Chang, yeah, Thundering Mantis with Beardy. I, I love when they bust out the Mantis style, right? I love that, right? It's fun. Uh, Jet Li and, and his Shaolin teacher both doing Mantis, their version of Mantis style at the end of uh, Martial Arts of Shaolin. It's fun to watch. I love it. 
Warriors 2 has my favorite Mantis style martial arts. Period. Period. When this character <laughs> reveals himself <laughs> and starts doing the Mantis style, his style, the speed, the violence, the, fero the, the ferociosity. I don't even know what I'm saying right now. <laughs> I'm probably saying it wrong. The way they get creative with a little bit of wire work, just a little. They get, they get a little creative with some of the movements. It is so good, fast, violent, brutal. And then when you get the one-on-one -on -one stuff is the shit. But then when you get a two-on-one, the fire choreography is absolutely outstanding. And by the end, I got by the end of that V pan and scan VHS. I wonder if I still have that in the garage. Pan and scan VHS tape. By the end of that, my jaw dropped. I was like, wow, I totally get it now. I get why this was a cult classic. I get why people love this movie. And it is absolutely phenomenal. But even though for fun, they did a, a few, very few wire enhanced movements to be creative there's no wires for this shot right here casanova wong again extremely underrated in my opinion does one of the coolest martial arts kung fu kicks in kung fu cinema history no wires runs jumps up and spins in the air and comes down and kicks our main villain in the neck and you can see it connect <laughs> like, he takes it in the neck no wires all skill because Casanova Wong is Taekwondo Grandmaster okay this is what it's all about this is what it's all about this is why these movies are special and of course because it's Samuel Hung while all the craziness is going on he's got to have a shenanigans fight with Dean <laughs> on the side <laughs> got to have the comedy fight because you got to remember, the audience that went to these movies back then, they came for everything. They wanted to see everything in a movie. They wanted to see comedy. They wanted to see violence, kung fu, action. They wanted to see romance. You got to throw it all in one movie, right? So again, uh, it might be jarring for some people that aren't used to Samuel Hung's style, but it is phenomenal. And this is a classic. And this is the best this movie has ever looked from Arrow Video. And again... Highly recommend both these movies, Warriors 2, the game trilogy. Again, the links are in the description box below if you guys want to check it out for yourself and uh, look into it. And uh, yeah, so that is it for the Arrow Blu-ray reviews. But yeah, Warriors 2 is the shit. It is legit. Enjoy it. Watch it late at night with the sound up. Get a little drink a drink with it, some snacks, and go back in time to uh, the 70s style of Kung Fu movie making because again they don't make them like they used to so there you go there you go guys that is it i know what is a v <laughs> vhs what the hell is that anubis what's going on brother good to see you yeah yeah good to see you good to see all these badasses here yeah, make sure you guys subscribe to Anubis. He's got he's he's interviewing a whole bunch of metal band members and groups, man. It's awesome. Uh, who's a better striker, Chuck Liddell or Dan Henderson? Ooh, that's tough. I would say Chuck is more technical. Uh, Chuck's more technical. Dan, uh, he's got there's a reason why they call him right hand Dan. So he's got that power. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, hey, there he is, uh, a, a, a legend who knows a little bit about Wing Chun. That's right. It's good to see you, man. <laughs> uh, we got to, at some point, schedule our bl uh, blood sport review, unless it's too late. So, because I know you're doing your tour in Hong Kong. Uh, but yeah, make sure you guys subscribe also to the Kung Fu Genius, the Wing Chun legend himself. There you go. Oh, there you go. Retro, reach out to Alex. Reach out. Yeah, Alex will do it. That's right. Hend Hendo bombs. Yeah, he knows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go, retro serial. Reach out. Send a message. I said we 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 network it live, baby. That's that's how we do it. <laughs> that's how we do it, man. That's how we roll. Oh man. But yeah, let me know, uh, Alex. 
send me a message later if it's if it's too late. I might have some interviews next week to schedule, but um, if it's in the clear, we got to sneak in the Bloodsport review if we can. So if not, uh, you know, we'll 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 talk about it for sure. You need to get in on one of these kung fu shows. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Classics, man. Warriors 2. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, I needed that. Woo. I'm sweating over here, guys, because it's hot as fuck. It's almost 90 degrees over here right now. <laughs> and this is with the fan on, uh, but it's all good. That's all good. Yeah, retro serial martial artist himself. That's right. He knows. He knows what's up. He knows. Yes. <laughs> Let me go ahead and stop sharing here. Turn that off. There we go. Now we're back. We're back. Yeah, retro... Uh, Thrash Pondo hit me up, I think, a while back. So yeah, at some point we gotta get the we gotta get the band back together. I'm itching to uh at some point I know I say this all the time, but I'm itching to bring back verses once in a while. <laughs> so I'll let you guys know. I got two versus groups. So if you see me post a versus with a different group, that's because it's with a different group. But I'll definitely include the, all the other guys in the other group because uh, we could do some stuff. Horror movies, cult movies, different groups like different things. So, like if I do a verse, like I'm not going to invite Rick Myers to a. Uh, <laughs> let me see. What we got? Let me see. Uh, I'm trying to think. I spit on your grave what, ranking video. <laughs> I'm not going to invite Rick Myers to that. So, yeah, man. Yeah, I got I got two good ideas, and I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, send it to the Movie Dojo Army. That's right, the channel members. That's right. I'm gonna send it to you guys, so you guys can vote. Those of you of a certain tier that can vote, I'm gonna send it to you guys. You guys get to pick the next verses. That's right, Anubis. I, yeah, Anubis, you'd be in the you'd be in the horror group for sure. So. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We might do some other stuff earlier. We don't have to wait till October. What's going on, Lewis? How you doing? Yeah. We got Kai X EXP in the house. Well, yeah, man. We had we did a lot of verses with you. Uh, yeah, man. You were on some fun ones for sure. I st I still. <laughs> One of the best ones ever, I think, was Home Alone versus, what was it? It was Home Alone versus, oh, God damn it. Help me out, Movie Dojo Army. Oh, my God. The Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Home Alone versus, help me out, guys. Christmas movie. Christmas movie. Turbo Man. Come on, help me. <laughs> Turbo Man. Oh my God, my brain is gone. My brain is gone. You guys know which movie I'm talking about. But yeah, that episode was hysterically hilarious. Thank you. Thank you, Sumo. Yes, there you go. That episode was hilarious. Plus we had Rick show up as uh, Kung Fu Santa. Yeah, that episode. You guys got to watch that episode. <laughs> that was great. Yes, thank you guys. Jingle all the way. That episode was great. Not just because of the episode, but... The result <laughs> is shocking. The result is shocking. You guys got to watch it. You can find it in the versus section on the on the channel below. I got what am I got the belt? I'm calling out for the champ. I got I want the belt. I want the belt. Uh, but yeah, check the versus section. Home Alone versus Jingle All the Way. It is hysterical. Yes, the <laughs> poor poor Joe Valley man. Joel Valley, uh, my brother from another mo mother from uh, Media Glitch, who I just had uh, on the channel a while back. We uh, interviewed James Pax. That's right, Lightning from Big Trouble in Little China. So if you guys missed that uh, interview, check it out. But yeah, poor Joel, man. Joel was hating Versus for a while. 
I felt bad for him. I felt bad for him. He was hating versus. He's like, God damn it. Every time I show up, I lose. <laughs> Batman returns. I said, Batman. Thanks, Batman. <laughs> yes, we did. That was another Christmas episode. We did Batman Returns versus Iron Man 3. It was two superhero Christmas episodes we did. Uh, or one of them was the two superhero movies went against each other. So, yeah, check that one out, too. It's hysterical. Uh, the Fly is a classic. The original and the much better um, Cronenberg one in the 80s. Yes. Check out the Cronenberg one with Jeff Goldblum. That's a... Uh, that, that one's a classic for sure. Even though I voted for the other movie, still check out The Fly. <laughs> sorry, Joel. I'm sorry. <laughs> Heather, if you were on the panel, you would have you would have voted for Jingle. I got you. I got you. Uh, Severio's been cleaning up here. He's been watching The Flash and Transformers and Guardians. Yes, all movies we have not seen yet. Like I said, the next live movie review catch-up video of me and Lady Fat is going to be huge. <laughs> bop, 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 bop. It's going to be huge, but it's going to be a while, so. I know, right? <laughs> oh, I think, I didn't, didn't Rick, like, refuse to vote? I think Rick realized how it was going, <laughs> and then he was just like, Santa doesn't have to vote. <laughs> <laughs> Santa is not voting. <laughs> Rick, Rick, Rick's smart, man. Rick, 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 is, Rick is a genius. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, uh, I'll bring it back at some point. But yeah, at least I have two. I have two ideas. At least I have two. So, and uh, you guys are going to like the, the next two. And um, let's see. The next time we do an Amazon watch party here on the channel, uh, well, not here on the channel, but <laughs> for the members, uh, let's see. If I'm thinking about doing the hidden, the hidden. I have not seen the hidden. I know, right? So I want to watch the hidden with you guys. Uh, Chase has seen Indy 5 and you might not like it. <laughs> I heard some things and I'm just like, eh. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out. I still need to watch this, Severio. I have the Fly box set, but I haven't watched the sequel yet. But I heard it's good. Let's see, I got a message here. What is going on over here? Who's interrupting the stream? How dare you? Okay. Again, cheers, guys. Thanks again for hanging out. Uh, Chase says, Indy 5 has a bad story. Okay. The sequel is not bad. Eric Stoltz. All right. Yes, the original Marty McFly. <laughs> yes, this is on the list. If you got, if you, let me see, if you guys have the hi ya, y'all know we, y'all know we support hi ya here on the channel. We go, I'm going to blow it up. I'm going to go, bam. I always got it ready, baby. That's right. Hi, y'all. The best martial arts streaming service. They have a movie on there. Eye for an Eye, The Blind Swordsman. And all I saw was the trailer, and I'm like, sold. <laughs> I'm like, sold. And uh, I spoke to Rick today, and he was just like, Rick's, Rick, Rick didn't go into a review yet because we're probably going to review it for the action, the next action film autopsy episode coming up. But uh, Rick was just like, where did this come from? In a in a positive, good way. That was Rick's response to Eye for an Eye. So, yeah, you guys need to check this out. It's on uh, Hi-Ya right now. So, Woo, OG classic right there. Yeah, seven grand masters. What? You found Seven Samurai Criterion on Blu-ray for $10. Now, that's a steal right there. You have done well, my young Padawan. <laughs> nice. Nice pickup, Heather. Yeah.
I'll be doing some more Arrow Blu-ray reviews probably next week. I'm playing catch up because all last week I was I was down for the count with a fever. Uh, but uh, I'm going to have some giveaways, some Wellgo USA giveaways, four Blu-rays, and these are these two of these movies you're going to want. <laughs> they're badass. They, <laughs> I've seen one of them. I know they're badass. The other one looks badass. So you'll stay tuned. I'm going to upload a video to all the social medias. I'll keep you guys in the loop. And uh, we'll do something this Friday. We'll have another giveaway. So uh, let's see. As a Beast Wars fan, please don't take Lady Fab Blood to see Transformers. <laughs> Wait for streaming. Yeah. I, I'm hearing a lot of mixed things about Transformers. So. Uh, Rob from ETN, shout out to Rob. He he said he loved it. Uh, other people were like, well, the, the beasts were in it for a little bit, but uh, they didn't really matter that much. Rhino, Rhinox didn't even talk. <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't know. We, we might just wait till streaming at this point. So, But, we, you know, we might enjoy it. Who knows? Midnight in Paris. I don't know if I've seen, I don't think I've seen that one. I mean, she may have, but I, I that one doesn't sound familiar, so. Yeah, I literally mailed stuff. Like, I posted it the other day. That I finally mailed everything. <laughs> so, yeah, again, sorry for the delay. But, yeah, this Friday may be the last Blu-ray giveaways for a while. But uh, there's two, they're two goodies. You guys will, you're going to want a, a shot at those. Brian's still watching the Mortal Kombat movies. Okay. Oh, nice. Nice. That's a cool name. Doomsday Vasquez. I like that. Nice. Violence Jack. Nice. <laughs> Copy that. The extreme. Anime, the, the extreme side of anime, <laughs> which led to our hilarious My Hero Academia moment. If you guys don't remember that, I, I, I posted it as a video. You can find it. It was really funny. Uh, Severio really liked the new Transformers movie. As someone who never watched Beast Wars cartoon, I really liked the Maximals in the movie. All right. Oh, no. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know if she seen it. Um, but I, I have not seen Midnight in Paris. That doesn't sound familiar. So, uh, that is a problem I have with the new Transformers. The Maxwell's were just too inconsequential. It should have been a standalone Beast Wars movie or just not include them at all. Uh, disagree with Rob. I don't think it's the best live action Transformers movie today. Okay. What's your favorite? Uh, let me take a guess. So very, your favorite live action Transformers movie is the third movie. I'm going to throw that out there. <clears throat> Starting from Michael Bay. <laughs> not, not including the animated film. I'm going to say the third film's your favorite. Uh, Love Samurai Jack. I never finished it, though. I always meant to um, uh, buy like the box set, the completed box set. And I wasn't there to see it when they brought the show back. And it was actually like violent. <laughs> I was like, wow. I heard it was violent. But yeah, there's a there's a big completed box set that has the whole show. At some point, I'll I'll pick it up. But yeah, I from what I from what I watched, I enjoyed it. Oh, that's right, that's right. The My Hero Academia. <laughs> I only like the first two, but because of Fox. <laughs> oh man. All right, so it was the third movie. Okay. Matthew Garfield in the house. What's going on? Uh, yes. Uh, me and Rick Myers did a trailer reaction for Hidden Strike. Uh, it's got potential. Hopefully it's, hopefully it's fun. Hopefully it's fun. You got to remember, though, that that movie is like six years old. Uh, they're just now releasing it for some strange reason. But uh, hopefully it's fun. Hopefully it's a, a good time. I have not kept up with uh, Mel Gibson's recent stuff. I think the last 
what was the last Mel Gibson movie I seen? Because he's he's making he's making a lot of movies now, a lot of straight to streaming movies, uh, small indie films. But I'm trying to think, what was the name of that movie? Hold on. The last movie I saw with Mel, not counting Expendables Four, was actually pretty good. Bloodfather. Yeah, Bloodfather was legit. That's a good movie. That's actually pretty good for like. But yeah, if I if there's something recent I've seen, I can't think of what it is. <laughs> it must not have made an impression. <clears throat> Excuse me. Overall, all Transformers films have too many human stories that no one really wants to see. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Oh, well, it's gone now, Matthew. It got copyrighted claims, so it's not there anymore. <laughs> it's up there for the members. The members can see it, but other than that, it's a copyright claim. I know Megan Fox is in uh, <laughs> is in uh, Expendables 4. Apocalypto. Oh, we're talking about directed movies. Um, I finally saw Hacksaw Ridge. That was That was great. Hexall Ridge was great. I was surprised how good that was. Ah, there you go. Thank you, Jake. Yes, Fat Man. I really I love Fat Man. I'm like the only one <laughs> that liked Fat Man. <laughs> Me and Lady Fat were like the only ones that liked Fat Man. Yeah, Fat Man was good. Yeah, that was great. That's your is that your is that your crush now? Isn't Summer weaving everyone's crush right now? <laughs> she needs to get more, like she needs to be put in the in the in the limelight more. She needs to be in more starring roles. I know she had that small part in Scream, but you know it'd be cool to see her in uh, other stuff. Looking forward to seeing Samurai Reincarnate. Did you buy it, Sumo, or you bought the Chiba box set? Samurai Reincarnation's wild, man. <laughs> it's wild. That's a wild movie. Uh, on the line, it's where he plays a radio host. All right, cool. All right. Yeah, Apocalypto is, is a, that's an intense movie. Apocalypto makes you appreciate today. <laughs> Apocalypto makes you go, Hmm, I'm glad I don't live back in those old days. Yeah, that's what Apocalypto does. <laughs> yeah, Mayhem's great. Mayhem's great. But uh, recently, besides that and uh, what was the other one? Ready or Not. She's kind of just been like a side character in movies. It'd be cool to see her in more out in the, out in the front. So, And not just for... Skinematography purposes. <laughs> She's actually a good actress. Okay, you got the box set. Okay, cool. There is a Eureka release of uh, Semi Reincarnation, but you're good to go, Sumo. You got the box set. So, you know, I've never seen Ted 2. Hey, all right. Four people loved Fat Man. <laughs> all right, nice. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of people out there that wanted me to do a versus a fat man versus uh the david arbor santa action movie and i'm just kind of like eh, that's not really fair <laughs> like there's action in fat man but it's not really an action movie it's an extremely bleak dark comedy and that's pushing it. Uh, David Arbor is like fucking John Wick. I really enjoyed Violent Night. Violent Night's great, but I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of, that would be, I don't know if that's fair <laughs> to put that as a versus. Ted 2 is better than the first. Okay. 
Did, did did Flash Gordon come back? That's all. Did Sam come back? That's all I want to know. <laughs> Oh, Flash Gordon. I remember watching the first Ted and all the Flash Gordon references. I was rolling because that was it was so unexpected. <laughs> and then and then Sam actually showed up in the movie. I was like, what is happening? But I was enjoying it. So let me know if Sam comes back. Don't worry about spoilers. Let me know if he comes back in the sequel. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't do a Ted three at this point. Yes. Yes. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. Sean kicked it off. Best horror film of the 80s and 90s. Go. Yes, I'm involving you. I'm taking the pressure off of me. <laughs> or, or, or that's so hard to 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 uh just generalize. Pick one of the best. So there you go. I'll make it a little easier. Let me know in chat right now. One of the best horror films from the 80s, one of the best horror films from the 90s, go. And I'll blow it up on screen here in chat. Comedy sequels are hard to do. They're hard to do. Comedies are hard to do in general. Oh, well, this is unexpected. We got 80 Shining. Look at that. We have the 80 Shining. Actually, I'm thinking of something else. No, that's correct. <laughs> I don't know why I'm like, that's unexpected. No, nice, Chase. Friday the 13th. There you go. Nice. The Thing. There you go. Oh, there you go. Seven. Nice. There you go. These are great choices. I I, I, I defend Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. I love that movie. <laughs> yes inked cane hey it's all good i love maximum overdrive <laughs> you know charlie not charlie sheen look at that emilio estevez is blatantly on on the sauce in that movie <laughs> he's red his eyes are glazed he is high as a kite and steamy king's like fuck it we're still filming the movie where we're fighting vehicles <laughs> and you get an ACDC soundtrack. There you go. I re I represent Maximum Overdrive. <laughs> Child's Play. All right. There you go. All right. Uh, yes, yes. It's it's more suspense, but I love that movie so much. I'm putting it on the list. So good. Go ahead and choose that, Steve. -O. I love the Hitcher. Let's see. Uh, for Gore, Chainsaw Two, The Thing, and Hellraiser. Okay. And you got Sumo. <laughs> Sumo saying everything from the 80s is the best. <laughs> Second would be The Thing. There you go. Wes Craven's New Nightmare for, for 90s. All right. Alien. Was Alien 80s? Was Alien 80s or was that like 79 or something? Now you got me wondering now. Hold on. Let me check when Alien came out. Because sometimes I forget myself. Oh my God. You're right there, guys. Alien came. This is insane. Alien came out in 1979. <laughs> That's insane, man. Oh, yeah. I know which thing you were talking about. Yeah. 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 Fuck it. Fuck it. Like, we're doing 70s now. Let's throw 70s in there. So we got Alien for 70s. All right. We got Carrie. Let's have fun here. Let's do let's throw in 70s too. Sleepaway camp. Puppet Master. Nice. Practical effects over CGI. There you go. I think we're all for that. You guys have got some great choices. Movie Dojo Army knows what's up, baby. That's right. Yeah. Phantasm. All right. Boy. Jaws, there you go. Bruce Day just uh, passed, didn't it? <laughs> yes, Predator, baby. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Pre guys, just 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 picture this for a second. 
Predator and Robocop came out the same year. <laughs> 1987. Yo, and I'm 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 I think there's a whole bunch of crazy awesome cool shit that came out in 1987. Like it's insane. Uh the entity, yeah, that's a crazy movie. Good luck remaking that one, which they will not. I I dare them to remake this. Uh Exorcist, yes. Oh, did you guys hear that supposedly at the film festivals the new Exorcist requel was not received well. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys heard that, so we'll we'll see <clears throat> when it comes out and we're all uh, able to see it together at some point. What's up, Egg Shen? We'll, we'll be the judge of that, but uh, I don't have my high, hopes high for that. Hellraiser. All right. <laughs> this is the best decade ever. Fuck it. Fuck it. Throw in 60s. We're having a blast. Throw in some 60s horror. Yeah. Halloween. There we go. Yeah, Steve O knows what's up. Doom 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 doom. Love they live. Oh my goodness. You <laughs> protest. <laughs> you know, Heather, I ruined it. Now that I've publicly said it, that's it. Someone, someone from Blumhouse <laughs> is gonna like, oh, we gotta do that. Blumhouse is doing exorcists. Let's see what else we got here. Yeah, rest in power, man. We got Jaws 2. Look at that. Jaws 2 shout out. Shopping Mall. That's another fun one. Yeah. Got some fun ones here. You guys have great taste in cinema. Yes. Brr. <laughs> Yeah, was it Gordon Green? Gordon Green or whatever the fuck? Yeah, again, I don't have high hopes for <laughs> the new Exorcist, Exorcist requel trilogy. Nosferatu, yeah, that's another one. Ooh. Oni Baba, man. I need to. Sh I still need to show Lady Fat this movie. I, do I have this on Blu-ray? I, I either have this on Blu-ray or DVD Criterion. I got to show her this movie. <laughs> Oni Baba was good. That was good. The Beyond? Yes. Yes. Reanimator? All right. All right. These are some good ones here. Uh, is this the one with um, the Lighthouse directors doing this, right? That has potential because that guy's a good filmmaker. I'm sure I'm sure a lot of people would agree with you with that one, Severio, for sure. <laughs> yeah, Ravenous. We did a whole movie review on Ravenous, Steve-O, if you want to check that out. Uh, will you do an Exorcist and High Plains Drifter 50th anniversary stream? I don't know. I have not thought about it. Those are two, two classics, though. Dude. Dude. <laughs> this movie. Oh, my God. I well, The first time I watched this movie, Phantom of the Opera, I enjoyed it. I had fun with it all the way. And then when it got to that last... Like, I enjoyed it. I was like, this is fun. I enjoyed this, right? But when I got to that last shot, that last shot in the movie towards the end, and Lon Chaney, as the Phantom, fucks with the rabid crowd that's trying to kill him, and he fucks with them. That was, that's got to be one of the greatest horror movie moments ever. And I went from enjoying the movie going to okay i love this movie now <laughs> right at the end oh so good you got you guys know what happens at the end of the movie oh my god it's so good <laughs> stop making fast and furious movies <laughs> yes alien tv series is coming this is coming 
Trevor. It's coming. It's it's supposed to be bigger, gorier, and better. So yeah, it's 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 been greenlit. Enemy mine? <laughs> That's horror. <laughs> I I admit I actually like enemy mine. I know. I know I like it. I know it's bad. But I enjoy it. Oh, you only seen dude, the fa- <laughs> Gerard Butler Phantom of the Opera. Oh. Oh, silent. There's some great silent films out there, Sean. Oh, yeah. There's some great stuff out there for sure. Let's see. <laughs> not family enough. <laughs> I'm, I'm not family hard enough. That's why I don't like the fast movies. <laughs> Thought about family. I want the last Fast and Furious movie to just be called Family. That's just it. That's the name of the movie. <laughs> family. We got The Shining, The Lost World from the 1920s. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. I'm trying to think what was the last silent film I've seen. I have a I have a, a movie called The Gollum Blu-ray, and it's not Lord of the Rings. <laughs> but it's old school silent film Blu-ray. I have not watched it yet, but I heard it was pretty good. But um, what was it? Um uh man. I'm just trying to think of the ones, the silent films that I actually own. Oh, we got Freaks, 1932. There you go. Goobble Gobble, Goobble Gobble, One of Us. Creature from the Black Lagoon, that's one of my favorites. Yeah. I don't got friends, I got family. <laughs> oh, Monkey Shines, there you go. We got some Monkey Shines. M with Peter Lore, I still need to see this. I need to see this movie. No, Heather. Uh, it's the very last shot when the the uh, the the rabid group of men are trying to hunt and kill the phantom, and he's running away. And they corner him, <laughs> and so he stops. The phantom stops, and then he reaches into his his coat as if he has something dangerous in there, and so the crowd around him. The rabid group of guys trying to kill him stop. They're like, what the fuck is he doing? And he pulls out like he has something in his hand. And he makes this motion right here. And he runs at this group of guys this way. And they're like, ah, because they don't know what he has. And then he turns around. And then he runs at the other guy, other group of guys, like he's going to throw something at them. And they're like, ah, they're freaking out, right? And then he stops. And then he does this. He shows that there was nothing there the whole time. And he just did that to fuck with them. And then he starts laughing. <laughs> I was like, that's one of the greatest movie scenes I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and after that, the crowd, you know, get on top of him and they start fucking him up. And he's still laughing while he's dying. Yeah, that is one of the greatest <laughs> moments. <laughs> All right, we're going to switch it up. We're going to switch it up to 90s action now. Ooh, Black Sabbath. Let me, let me get into a, a couple of the other ones here. Here one. Black Sabbath. Split, split second. Let's do 90s action. What's some of the best 90s action movies? Yeah, I have it way at the end of the movie, Heather. It's like right before the movie ended. <laughs> but it was so hilarious that he was just fucking with them. <laughs> <laughs> he knew he was dead anyway. 
<laughs> he just wanted to fuck with them. <laughs> oh, it's great. Speed. All right. Christopher kicked it off. That's what we're doing right now, guys. Thanks again for you badasses that just joined in. We're talking 90s action films. So let us know in chat right now what's some of the best 90s action movies. And I'm going to click on them and I'm going to put them on screen here. So Christopher picked, uh, kicked it off. Speed. Speed. Give me what I need. Yeah. Grease lightning. Yeah. <laughs> Classic. This is a classic movie. Yes, Surviving the Game. Yes, me and Radical Reggie did a whole review on Surviving the Game, and it's hysterical and badass. Check it out if you guys have not seen our review of Surviving the Game. Terminator 2, you know that was going to be there. That's right, represent some Cyborg. Let's get some cult classics in there. Is Cyborg 90s or Cyborg 80s? Hold on, I'm going to check right now. Cyborg, 1989. You were close, Heather. <laughs> Cyborg is still dead. still an 80s movie. How crazy is that? Uh, Independence Day, are you ashamed of the? <laughs> is that your choice? Are you, you, your emoji there, you're blocking your face in shame? Are you? <laughs> if, if Independence Day is your choice, then don't be ashamed. It's okay. Soldier, that's underrated. <laughs> reptilian <laughs> i've not seen that one let's see uh executive decision yes that's another good one blade yeah now we're talking yes hard target yes what happened okay i thought i cl clicked on it there there you go hard target leon <laughs> everyone <laughs> you just have you have to do that line you were 10 when Cyborg came out. Cyborg, still an 80s movie, man. That's so crazy. Uh, Jake for funsies is throwing in Jurassic Park. Let's see. Tango and Cash. I think that's 80s. Let me check. Great pick, though. Nineteen eighty nine. Wow, you're close. <laughs> it's like right there. <laughs> Uh, love Tango and Cash, though. Hunt for Red October, Air Force One, Mission Impossible. That's right. More more respect for Predator 2. Any Jean-Claude Van Damme film. I come in peace. You go in pieces. Gotta love Dark Angel. Drive, yes. Yes. Drive, man. So good. Oh, there he is. Hey, hey what's up, Rob? How you doing, brother? He spoke to God after I messaged you. He said you have to make it on the first. <laughs> well, I well, you know, hey, I guess I gotta show up. Oh, Rob, I don't know how long I can stay, brother, but I, I, I'll pop in for sure. Ronan, we're talking about uh, the, the best '90s action movies. Rob, uh, join in on the fun here. So Ty Ronan, yes, yes. Let's see. Doberman, yeah. Doberman's fun. Under the Siege. <laughs> there you go. Totally Recall. <laughs> recall, recall, recall. Let's see. L.A. Wars. All right. We, we, we're bringing in more cult movies. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Represent. Still the best live action turtles movie. Fight me. You will lose. <laughs> Street Fighter. Street Fighter, we representing. We representing. Okay. Uh Breakdown. That's a great thriller. Yeah. That's an underrated movie right there. <laughs> I was I'm concerned. Uh, I'm concerned now, Rob. You got me scared. <laughs> deadly weapon the deadly takeovers i don't know about that one we got time cop we got love for time cop here under siege we got heat uh rambo 2 rambo 2's the 90s rambo 2's 80s uh great choice for the 80s though boondock saints 
It was a firefight. You know I had to do that, right? <laughs> oh, shit. Nemesis. I think that's 90s. I think that barely made it. Uh, all right. We got some dark territory, love. There you go. All right. Clear and present danger. There we go. More Defoe-isms. Uh, Rob's throwing in Twister. Rob, are you excited for the Twister 2 movie coming out? <laughs> if looks could kill, action comedy. Oh, I'm going to have to see that one. Let me see. If looks can kill, I'm going to look it up right now. Rob, I expect a review of Twister 2. Uh, if looks can kill, 1991. Uh, Richard Grieco, and who else is in here? Linda Hunt. Interesting. Michael has to take summer class in French, a class trip to France to graduate high school. He is, however, mistaken for an agent, and people try to kill him. There are 007 style cars, cuties, crooks, etc. Uh, the Bert. Uh, the machine copy this plot synopsis. <laughs> Did anybody see the machine? That's what I want to know. Yeah, you could throw in Phantom Menace. Sure. Phantom Menace. You could throw that in. Why not? Get some sci-fi in there. Mortal Kombat. Long kiss. Now, nah, here you go. Yes. Long kiss. Good night. Blade again. Every time someone says blade, I'm going to put it up. I'm going to care how many times I put it up. I'm going to put it on there. <laughs> Rob, it is your it is your duty to please the critics' booties. No, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> it is your duty to review Twister to Electric Boogaloo. Yes, you have to, just for the fact. Uh, score, 1995. Score? Which one's that one? I'm going to look it up. Score. I have not seen this one. You guys seen Score? Japanese flick, 1995. Let's see here. Uh, small time Yakuza thug is thrown into a bloody battle after a bank robbery. He was forced into go into goes wrong. What? <laughs> when all the men begin to turn on each other, a hitchhiking serial killing couple decide to steal the loot. This movie sounds wild. Where can we watch this? Hmm. Maybe it's on Amazon Prime. It's kind of hard to see. Interesting. I'm going to keep an eye out for that one. <clears throat> uh, Batman Return. I saw you. Uh, I saw you. You reviewed it. <laughs> I'm going to have to check out your review just for fun. Yes. R.I.P. All right. Rest in power. Treat Williams, son. Now what? That's right. Yes, Deep Rising. And we reviewed that here a long time ago, guys. Check that out. Check that review out. That's OG right there. That's one of the most fun movies. You know, the director of Deep Rising, if I ever did a ranking video for all that guy, like my favorite movies of his or or just rank his movies in general, uh, Deep Rising might be number one. It might be number one. What's the machine? <laughs> Is that what the is that what the public said about the movie when that when the trailer came out for the machine? There you go. Blade 2. Is that 90s? Let me see. Blade 2. Two thousand two, Blade 2. Wow. Still love that movie. No, Twister 2. <laughs> I thought Twister 2 is greenlit. It's coming, right? Total Recall. Okay. The girl. <laughs> Rob already reviewed it. So he reviewed it. So I didn't have to. Blade again. <laughs> yes, the crow counts. Yes. Yes. Not all right. All right. Some forgotten gems over here. Top of the world, Ma. That's right. Yeah. 
Denzel Washington versus John Lithgow. And nobody talks about this movie. <laughs> the movie's great. Days of Thunder. Eh, you throw it in there. Why not? It's got the car racing and stunts. Why not? Highway to Hell. Wow. Hell Cop. Enjoyed the Hell Cop in that movie. Let's see. <laughs> Brawley. I'm throwing in some anime now. The Jackal. Is that the Bruce Willis movie? Uh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say the first men in black, yes. <laughs> Blade 2, cocaine vampires. <laughs> there you go. Zero's coming out with the hard hitters here. Yeah. Yeah, zero's on fire. Anaconda. Uh Eon Flux is old school. I'm I I don't remember it, but I did watch it. Now we're talking. I was waiting. I was waiting for somebody to, to say it now. Point break. There you go. Was that 90s? I think that was 90s, yeah. No, no one said The Rock yet. <laughs> the Rock or Con Air? No, that, face off? Come on. Oh, here we go. Close enough. We got replacement killers. Now, yes. Yes. Yeah, you guys have come up with some good ones today, for sure. Should we do 80s? <laughs> That's going to be easy. It might be fun, though. Fuck it. You know, you, know how, you, you know how I love how we've done horror already, 90s, 80s, and 70s, and now we're doing action. You notice no one's no one's ventured into 2000s <laughs> unless it's by accident. I'm surprised nobody said the Matrix. I'm surprised. There you go. Yeah, broken arrow, throw it in there. There you go. Yeah, fuck it. Fuck it. Throw deep blue sea in there. Fine. <laughs> you ate my bird. You know, I've never seen this. I've never seen that movie. Is that the John Carpenter movie? I've not seen that one. All right, let's do 80s action. 80s action. 80s action. Some of the best 80s action movies. Go. I'll put it on screen. Uh, Die, Die Hard with a Vengeance is my last throw for 90s. <laughs> now we're doing 80s now. <clears throat> Good choice. Good choice for sure. Oh, all right. You guys want to do 2000s? Okay. All right. So let's do, let's, let's have some fun here. Let's do 80s and 2000s. Fuck it. All right. Tyler's kicking it off perfectly. There we go. Raw deal. There you go. We 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 pulling off the cult classics here. Red Heat, Cocainum. There you go. Severio likes the animated two th uh, team and T movie. Aliens, Cobra, yeah. Terminator. These are great choices. Love Lone Wolf and Cub, but I think those were 70s, weren't they? I'd have to check again. Some of the later ones may have been 80s. 300, okay. Superman 2, represent, represent. I'm curious. Let's let, let's 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 challenge ourselves. 80s is too easy. Let's challenge ourselves. Let's do just 2000s. 2000s and 2010s up. Let's let's challenge ourselves. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Everything 80s Jackie Chan. Silverado, that's a great one. Red Dawn. We'll get the last of the 80s in. So let's do 2000s now, guys, just for fun. Just for funsies. <laughs> I'm waiting on you guys. You guys go first. 
you know what I'm going to say, right? I'm going to see you if somebody says it first. Okay, edge it tomorrow. Good one. That's a good one. One of the most underrated movies ever. <laughs> okay, yeah. The Hunted with uh, Del Toro. That's another good one. Running Zero, man. You you're like <laughs> you might get you might get the Redford tonight. You're on fire, my friend. Yeah. Casino Royale, good one. <clears throat> Uh, Smoking Aces, that's another underrated movie. All right, it's obvious. You know which one I'm going to... Take a guess. Take a guess. What is Samurai Guy going to say now? 2000s movie. What What do you think I'm going to pick? This is off the top of my head. You should know. <laughs> well, Trevor likes Van Helsing. Okay. Punisher. Yes. Rest in power. Fury Road. These are great, great choices. Ramble 4. Great choices. You guys are, you guys are picking the good ones. There you go. All right. I'm going to just say it. <laughs> the raid. Come on. It's easy. <laughs> So you got the raid. All right, let's keep going. You guys are picking some good ones. Gone in 60 seconds with Nicholas Cage. The first Transformers movie. All right. Yeah, the rundown. That's an underrated movie. Underrated action comedy. Now, what other movie out there that has a similar plot, similar plot, premise of the raid but it belongs here go came out the exact same year the raid came out and it was just a coincidence but go you guys know which movie i'm talking about come on there you go there you go yes dread <laughs> Raid, uh, Mad Dog versus Two Brothers is probably Ross fight scene to this day. Crank! Yeah, there you go. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, the exclusive channel members uh, series off the shelf. Uh, we reviewed the Crank High Voltage. <laughs> it's insane. That movie's insane. I felt like I was on drugs watching that movie. Night Comes for Us. Oh, there you go. Street Kings. Dread again. There you go. Zero's on fire, man. Blood and Bone, Black Dynamite. Dra oh, Dragged Across Concrete. Interesting. Interesting choice. Upgrade. There you go. Davis Beers is back. He's on fire. I'm going to throw in Hardcore Henry just for fun. That's one of the most fun movies. <laughs> Had a blast watching that movie. I was laughing the whole time and having a great time. The Patriot. Okay. Favorite part of that movie. Mel Gibson with the tomahawk. Just going. Just raining it down. Non-stop on that dude. <laughs> just kept going. Screaming and yelling. <laughs> Best part of that movie. Hey, he fucked with his family, man. You can't do that shit. All right, Dark Knight Rises. Okay. I'm going to throw it in there since uh, Severio did the superhero one. I'm going to throw in another one. Uh, Captain America, w the Winter Soldier. I think that deserves to go there. Black Hawk Down. There you go. That's another underrated uh, Ridley Scott movie. Yes. Yes. Yes, if you, when was the last time you guys seen this movie? This is like one of the best horror remakes ever. And make sure if you guys watch this movie, watch the unrated version. But this is a, this turned into a straight up action movie later. Like I was so very surprised. Yeah, Hills Have Eyes is legit. You got Dark Knight, 
Let's see. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Throw Sisu in there. Yeah, go ahead. Saberos throwing in some Kong. Yeah, some good action in that. <laughs> Very nice, Brandon. Very nice. Oh, man. Very nice. Very well done, Brandon. Well done. <laughs> oh, oh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do it. I gotta play. <laughs> oh, if I can find it. <laughs> <laughs> well done brandon well well done my friend and if you guys are curious uh i bootleg reviewed this because i was shocked after what i just watched for the channel members so <laughs> uh will we do an actual review for rollerball remake in the future i don't know we'll see spider-man o2 tropic thunder War War Z Red. Okay, you know I am there. Michael has was the sequel to Red any good? Let me know. Yeah, Heather's got the yeah the unrated one. That's the way to go. The Hurt Locker. That's interesting. The Fifth Rambo's got that last half an hour. That last half an hour is great. Uh, Caitlin says three hundred. Okay. <laughs> Oh, rollerball. God damn it. <laughs> I know it's too easy to say like the John Wick movies. That's too easy. So you guys are picking some good ones that are outside of the norm. Some of them are like, yeah, that deserves to be there. But you guys picked some good ones too. Oh, shit. The original. Yeah, the original. Yep, for sure. Uh, equilibrium again. All right. Not as good. Okay. But it's okay. Pandorum. Fuck it. Yeah. Pandorum has some good action in that one. Sure. There you go. Zero, man. <laughs> Zero is on fire. Yes. Yes. Future review coming. I'll shoot him up at some point. I have not seen this. Has anyone seen this movie? <laughs> it looked ridiculous. Was it was it was it good, Severio? I don't know if I trust you, Severio. You like snake eyes. I don't know. <laughs> all right. We got some bullet train fans here. Uh all right. Look at Zero. Man. Kung Fu Hustle. That's a great choice. Where the fuck is Stephen Chow? What happened? What the hell happened to Stephen Chow? I know he direct he's behind the scenes directing stuff, but man, I miss that guy. Ooh, Battle Royale. All right, Gladiator. I'm gonna throw it in there just for fun. Braveheart. Again, has anyone seen <laughs> 10,000 BC? <laughs> Rob should see, Rob should have seen this, right? Because this this is his boy, right? Roland Roland Emmerich did this, right? So Rob, I'm sure Rob's seen it. <laughs> Thomas the Tank Engine. What else we got here? Yeah, Battle Royale. Unfortunately, Battle Royale Two was bad. <laughs> that was not good. I was like, what are we doing? What are we doing in Battle Royale 2? Uh, is this the the first Gamera? No, the, the Gamera trilogy was 90s, right? I have not seen the 2009 Gamera movie. <clears throat> you haven't watched it in years. <laughs> I told I was talking to Kyle Wong, uh, you know, a martial artist, stuntman, filmmaker. He's been on the channel several times. 
I, I mentioned <laughs> my review of Rollerball, <laughs> my quick thoughts video that I sent to the channel members. I sent that to him, and his response was, I bought Rollerball 2009 on DVD, and I still have no idea. <laughs> I still have no idea why. <laughs> that was his response. I should have him send it to me as a gag gift, just for proof that this exists. Uh, we got Gamer 2009. Brandon is back. We got Predators. There you go. On Bach. There you go. I was waiting for some On Bach stuff. Man on Fire. Okay. Yeah, you guys are coming up with some good ones. God, it's hot, man. Jesus. <laughs> we have the horde. Was that the zombie one? Or there was like some Rambo dude fighting like gangsters in the woods. Oh, yeah, I've not seen Gamma of the Brave. Yeah, there we go. 13 Assassins. All right. Kiss of the Dragon. Zagan Zero is coming out on fire, man. Knockoff. Wow, look at that. Shout shout out for... <laughs> you got a shout out for Knockoff. <laughs> Some Choi Hark there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what review. I don't know who reviewed it, but... I watched the review of Knock Off, and the guy was like, the movie where, the movie, the entertaining mo movie where you can clearly see that everyone's on cocaine in the movie. <laughs> I don't know who, I don't know what reviewer I saw review Knock Off, and it cracked me up. Okay, so it's the zombie one. Okay. Yeah, that had some good violence in that. Team, <laughs> Team America, son, what's up? That's right. Represent. <laughs> All right. You guys come up with some good ones. You know, I've, let's see, I've had, I think I only have the first Quiet Place. I still have not seen the second one. <laughs> I still haven't seen it. The Chaser. Is that the one where the pimp, it's about a pimp, right? Zero? If that was a good movie, there you go. Yeah, unleashed, underrated Jet Li movie right there. They got John Wick. There you go. Stone Cold, you know, Stone Condemned's pretty good. I mean, Condemned is a fun little battle royale movie. That's a fun movie. It had some good moments in that. Okay, yeah, Chaser was Chaser was that was a good thriller, man. That was good. That was really good. The Sonic films, okay. We're throwing in some animated stuff. All right. So is that true that Super Mario Brothers has beaten Frozen? I don't know if it's Frozen or Frozen 2 as the highest grossing animated movie of all time. Is that true? Let me know if that's true, guys. 13 Assassins represent again. The Swordsman, that was a good movie. That was a few years old, but that's a good that's a good flick. Recoil with Danny Trejo and Stone. I have not seen that one. Interesting. Oh yeah, I love this movie. I was just thinking about this movie the other day. I don't care. I don't give a shit that it's anime. I don't care. <laughs> Even if you guys don't like anime, watch Sword of the Stranger anyway. Watch it anyway. <laughs> it, is, it is so badass and legit. And the story is great. The animation, the fight choreography. Sword, Sword of the Stranger is phenomenal. Oh, we got some Kill Bill. Okay.
uh, for some recent recent stuff. We got Shang Chi here. Shout out, Ichi, Ichi the Killer, Zero, dude, dude, Zero is hardcore. It's hardcore tonight. Fire and Ice is a good anime. Fire and Ice. Is that the old movie that came out in the 80s? I think I have that movie. <laughs> I think I have that movie on DVD or something. Okay, it's in third place. The Lion King remake and Frozen 2 are... Oh, okay. Okay. I thought I saw something that said Mario beat Frozen 2 recently. God damn. The Lion King remake is the highest. <laughs> the Lion King remake? Jesus Christ. Anyone, anybody go see Little Mermaid? Just throwing it out there. Yeah, Fire and Ice, I remember enjoying that. <laughs> she said, hell no. <laughs> Samurai guy, how dare you ask that question? Who are you? <laughs> samurai guy's been doubled. He's been replaced. This is multiverse samurai guy. How dare he ask that question? <laughs> That's so bad. That is so bad. The Lion King remake is the highest grossing animated movie of all time. Oh. <sighs> <laughs> we can skip the little mermaid question. That was a joke. <laughs> what what haven't they remade yet in live action? Is there anything else? Disney has not uh, any classics. Maybe I shouldn't say anything. They might be listening. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, the Roni, the live action Roni Kenshin movies. Yeah. All of them. All of them. All four. There we go. Hero. There you go. Nice. Kill Zone. I'm going to throw Kill Zone in there. SPL, baby. Yeah. They, uh, me and my. Went to see Transformers. My dad was joking and said, I'm going to sneak in. <laughs> the brave, brave Little Toaster remake. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, God. Monsters, Inc. Live action. Yeah, hell yeah. Throw dog soldiers in there. Yeah, sure. Hell yeah. I'm not going to say no to that. You guys are on fire. All of you guys. But out of all of the action movies from the 80s and the 70s and the 2000s and the 2010s, we all know that Rollerball 2002 is the greatest action movie of all time. It's, it's better than anything mentioned tonight. It's better than The Raid. It's better than Predator, Die Hard, Rollerball. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I tried to keep going with it. I couldn't hold it any longer. See, if the live action is CGI in, in the house film, would you call it live action or animated? Well, that's why I went. That's why I went live action. That's why I did it like that. <laughs> I still need to see Four Brothers, 
But is it better than rollerball, Tyler? That's that's the question here. Yeah, I heard about Lilo and Stitch and Bambi. That's right. <laughs> uh... <laughs> if only it was April Fools, right? Then I'd have to really stick with the rollerball. The whole stream, the all two hours of the stream, I'll just keep gushing how great rollerball is. 2002. Yes, yes. And that's why it's, that's why it's even more disappointing <laughs> that the director of Die Hard and Predator did that movie. Jesus Christ. Vikings versus Krampus is close. That's close as being, you know, the greatest action movie ever. It's pretty close, so. <laughs> what was it last week? It was uh, Invinci was, uh, Invincible Force? What was the Crow Cop movie? <laughs> I forgot the name of the movie already. Well, that was the last live Q and A joke movie of the of the stream. Let me try to find it. Hold on. <laughs> Let me see if I can find them. Was it Invincible Force? <laughs> I forgot the name of the movie already. Oh, let me see. There he is. All right. Ultimate Force. <laughs> That's the name of the movie. Ultimate Force. That was last uh, live Q&A's uh, stinker of the stream. It's been replaced by Rollerball now. 20, 2002 Rollerball. Yeah, I heard I heard about this. I just I don't care. I just I have no interest. <laughs> if it's a good movie, great. But I just I just don't give a shit. <laughs> Violent Night, yeah, we can mention that again for sure. You know, I realize there's a lot of Roland Emmerich movies I have not seen. I've seen clips of and maybe reviews of, but there's a lot I have not seen. <laughs> yeah, that was a that was epic. All the trog isms. That was a couple of live Q and A's ago. <laughs> I should come up with a live Q and A streaming hall of shame. Trog, ultimate force, <laughs> and rollerball two thousand two. I'll just have it up. I'll have a video that I could play. We will we'll, we will honor and pay respect. <laughs> oh, Steel. Don't forget last week, I think we talked about Steel with Shaq. That'll go on there too. The Hall of Shame. <laughs> uh, I could see people saying that. Sure. I mean, why not? Yeah, Leviathan's fun. I enjoyed that one. I reviewed that way back. I don't even know if I reviewed that on my channel or was on Tony of the Dead's channel. I don't even remember whose channel was on. <laughs> there is no action in Rollerball 2 2002. Well, there's, there's no good action that you can actually see. I'm hearing all kinds of stories now. Um because it's so fascinatingly bad. I'm hearing like behind the scenes, it was a it was a an utter shit show, uh, travis travesty behind the scenes. Otherwise, that's why the movie came out the way it did. Apparently, even there was some sabotage as well. Like some people did not want Matiernan to succeed around that time. I think he, I don't know if there was some beef with some people in Hollywood. So, yeah, I heard the movie was, like, supposed to be rated R, hard R, bones breaking, teeth flying out, blood, 
Uh, and then that got changed at the last minute. And then the story got changed. I mean, I heard it's just, just a shit show. And like, I'm stunned. They still released it in theater, <laughs> but it's all about the night vision scene. It's all about the night vision scene where I just, I couldn't believe it. It was so embarrassing. It was so embarrassing. It was like an eight minute chase action sequence. And for some reason, the whole entire sequence is filmed in night vision. Our heroes are not wearing night vision. Our villains are not wearing night vision. But apparently when they filmed the whole entire eight minute sequence, I guess it was too dark. So they put a night vision filter <laughs> over this eight minute long chase sequence. It, it's, it's embarrassing. It is embarrassingly bad. Me and Lady Fabula were shocked. We couldn't believe what we were watching, man. I couldn't believe it. Let me catch up to you guys. Hold on. <laughs> Nick Nolte stuff. Yeah, we had some classic moments here. Oh, there's no comparison. Jason X, man. At least Jason X you can laugh at and get entertainment. At least Jason X you can see some cool kills. You know, at least you could see some of the action in Jason X. But for some reason, you know, John filmed it so close up that you could barely see the action in the movie. And it's it's just, it's a mess. I, I, I was stunned at how, I always heard how bad Rollerball 2002 was. And then I finally watched it. <laughs> I could not believe it, man. And there's, believe it or not, there's fans of that movie. If you look up the Blu-ray review for Rollerball 2002, there's people that love the movie. And I'm just like, all right. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed the movie. Uh, I Spy. Okay. They can see in the dark. Jason X has Kane Hodder. Yes. <laughs> well, Andrew Bruniarski was in Rollerball. He was like one of the big baddies at the end. Leatherface himself. And, you know, they could have had some cool stuff for him to do, but it was just, just uh, unbelievable. Even Paul Heyman gave up <laughs> by the end of the movie. Paul Heyman was all energetic by the end of the movie. He's like, oh, that's ha that happened. All right, that's happening. <laughs> And Shane McMahon showed up. He just showed up. He didn't have a line. He didn't do anything. He he looked. He turned and looked. And then he that was it. That was the end of the scene. Just perfection. <laughs> perfection. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You know, I've never seen I Spy. I heard this was bad. Did anyone see this one? Is this the... Uh, Eddie Murphy and Owen Wilson movie. It was like a spy action comedy. I've never seen I heard it wasn't that good, though. If you guys have seen this, let me know if you, what you thought about it. I'm sure by default, it's better than Rollerball 2002. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Rollerball 2002 was so bad that Future Sport, oh yeah, I said it. I said it right here on the channel. Future Sport, the TV movie starring Dean Cain and tax evading Wesley Snipes with his bad Jamaican wig was better than Rollerball 2002. <laughs> you never heard of Ice Pie, yeah. And it was it was around the time where Eddie Murphy and Owen Wilson were still popular. I mean, Eddie Murphy's back now, but they were still kind of mainstream. And I was curious about it, but I didn't hear good things about it. Has anyone seen that boxing movie with uh, it was like a comedy with Antonio Banderas and Woody Harrelson? Anybody seen that movie? Was that any good? I was always curious about that movie. I'm pretty sure a lot of people, a lot of you right now are like future sport. What the <laughs> fuck is that? <laughs> it's a TV movie that was rollerball esque. 
It took ideas from Rollerball, but it did its own thing. Play to the Bone. Was any was that good, Heather? Has anyone seen that? I've never seen that movie. Let me know if that was a good movie. It's a good little it's supposed to be a comedy, right? Whew, man, it's hot. <laughs> Play it to the bone. Starring Antonio Abanderas. All right, so it's good. Okay. I was always curious about that one. <clears throat> Wasn't there a boxing movie with Meg Ryan? Am I am I insane? Am I am I making shit up? There was a boxing movie with Meg Ryan, right? But she wasn't the boxer. She was like the coach or something like that. <laughs> she was like the promoter or something like that. Was that any good? Does anybody remember that movie? You were thinking of Showtime with Eddie Murphy and De Niro? I remember parts of that being funny, but then they kind of just dropped the ball at the end. Against the ropes. Was that any good, Zero? <laughs> Omar Epps was in that, right? Yeah, I was like, what is what is Meg Ryan doing in a boxing movie? What is happening? It's okay. It's average. You know, it was a pretty good movie that Meg Ryan was in. It's, it came out in the 90s. I don't know if I mentioned that movie before. We recently watched it, uh, me and Lady Fat. Like a couple of months ago, <clears throat> I'm gonna find it. I may have talked about it already, but let me go back and uh, try to find it here. You guys have, may have seen this. This play to the bone reminded me of a similar title. Flesh and Bone came out in 1993, the year where the year where every movie was defeated by Jurassic Park. <laughs> But Flesh and Bone, have you guys seen that? Dude, that was like one of the best thrillers I've seen in a long time. Uh, it says here, plot synopsis. Decades later, a son of a killer falls in love with a girl whose family's horrifying murder he saw in childhood. Spoilers! <laughs> Spoilers! Uh, uh, we went in blind. This was like a blind watch, so we didn't know any of that was coming. Uh, but Dennis Quaid and James Caan was kind of like the antagonist in the movie. But yeah, um, let me know if you guys seen Flesh and Bone. That was that was pretty good, pretty good thriller, man. There was another thriller I was always curious about. It looked good. It starred Dennis Quaid. Another one. Hold on. Is Dennis Quaid? <clears throat> excuse me. I lost him here. Damn it. Where'd he go? Right, I'll go back. I hit the wrong button. It was Dennis Quaid and... Um... Here we go. I got him now. Here we go. I'll find it. Man, sometimes IMDb sucks. Like, they they're... Their interface is like a pain in the ass. There you go. I got to go back to the, I think it's 90s, another 90s movie. I'm going back, going back, going back. Dennis Quaid was in Legion? Wow, I don't, I really don't remember Legion. Oh, he was like the guy that worked in the, like the diner, right? Or something like that. Switchback. Have you guys seen this one? 1997. Dennis Quaid and opposite Danny Glover. An FBI agent tries to catch a serial killer who kidnapped his son. Has you guys seen that one? Yeah, Dennis Quaid and Danny Glover. Switchback. That always looked interesting to me. I've never seen that one. All right. Severo watched Rocky IV. Nice. Uh, Against the Ropes was decent. I like Play to the Bone, mostly for Lolita Davidovich. Love Woody and Banderas chemistry, but mostly for Lolita. <laughs> All right, cool. I'll have to check it out one day. 
Which movie, uh, Heather? Switchback? I was always curious about that. Look, look good. There's a lot of good movies. There's a lot of good movies, good thrillers or action movies and stuff that kind of fall through the, or even horror kind of fall through the cracks and people kind of forget they even came out. Like a little hidden gems. There's a lot of good stuff out there. <clears throat> and that's the best thing about being a, a fan of films. You're always, you'll always find something new, you know? You'll go back to something like, like here, this is a perfect segue. If you guys are available, hang out. Ooh, excuse me. Sorry. I'm not drunk. If you guys are available tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time, join me and director Billy Hansen. We're going to be talking about uh, The Wages of Fear, a movie, a French film that came out in 1953, and I've never seen it. And me, and, me and Lady Fat watched it for the first time the other day, and <laughs> that's just all I can say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we're going to be re reviewing that movie tomorrow with spoilers, so it's okay. So if you guys are free, join us tomorrow at 5 o'clock. But yeah, again, that's a perfect example of always discovering uh, new movies and um, from all different eras and being pleasantly surprised by something. You know, that's what's, that's what's awesome about cinema. You're always going to find something cool. Okay, Switchback's good. All right, I'll see if it's on like Amazon Prime or something. Uh, the Butcher. I don't think I see that one. I I saw Tokyo Fist back in the. I've only seen it one time, but I remember enjoying it. I remember it was weird, yeah, but I remember enjoying it. I'd like to revisit that one, man. Is that even on Blu-ray right now? I wonder. The Butcher. Let me look up The Butcher. Hold on. Twenty twenty. Let's see here. The Butcher. And it's 2020 it came out. Is there 2006 The Butcher? Let me uh, look here. Not seeing anything here. There's The Magnificent Butcher. <laughs> Let me try The Butcher 2020 and see what pops up. Let me try that. Maybe that might pop up something. It was a Carl Urban short film. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not seeing anything. Uh, there's Butchers 2020. Oh, it's on Prime. Good. All right, cool. Thanks for looking that up. I'll have to put that in the queue. And check that out. But it looked it looked like a good thriller, man. There's some great stuff out there, guys. You just gotta find it. But then it's sometimes it's it's just fun to watch some B movie schlock. <laughs> our our tastes are very uh there's a big variety of what kind of movies we like over here. <laughs> we can watch a movie like Wages of Fear and be completely blown away. Or, uh, you know, slow burn and suspense at, at its finest. And then we can watch uh, Frankenhooker right after. <laughs> it's on Peacock. Butchers. Yeah, I, I think I seen, yeah, 2020 is Butchers. And I heard this was good. It's a horror thriller. I see a uh, family of sadistic butchers has dug into the back country and from the deep freeze of winter to the dog days of summer anyone who crosses their path is dead meat what other feeling i seen this i wonder if i saw this i'm trying to look at the trailer here i can't show it because of copyright but i might have seen this if i didn't i did hear good things about it though Butchers is on Tubi. Okay. There you go. B movie schlock at its finest. Jaws 3D. Yes. Speaking of Dennis Quaid, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he was on drugs that whole movie. <laughs> oh, man. 
Jaws 3D. Definitely entertaining, uh, especially if you compare it to Jaws of Revenge. <laughs> but then it depends on what kind of pain you want to sit through, right? <laughs> I don't even think Michael Caine showed up to Jaws the Revenge premiere. I think he just said, no, I'm not going. <laughs> Orca. <laughs> Man, I haven't watched Orca in a long time. Inner Space was fun. Yeah, that's another. I feel like it's another lost little hidden gem, a little lost a fun classic movie. Inner Space was fun. I remember that. I've seen that in forever. I'm surprised with all these uh, <laughs> fake versus movies that comes out. I'm surprised no one's done like an Orca versus Jaws <laughs> movie, like some kind of fake movie, some indie horror flick. That's probably why. That's probably why. Because three, three D, you can have fun with. And again, Lou Gossett Jr. Again, like you know, putting on a great performance. The Amazing Panda Adventure. I have not seen that one. Oof, man, I have not seen. I mean, last time I think I saw Titan AE was in theater. Yeah, and I remember, I remember for that for the time that that CG animation was pretty good. And there was a lot of it was a, it was early two thousand, so we had a lot of Creed, a lot of Creed uh, songs in that movie. <laughs> Don Bluth, man, Don Bluth, it, it, Don Bluth. Was the re was really the only real competition to Disney? You know, it's like Disney always came out on top, but they they were looking behind their shoulder at Bluff because Bluff had some hits. You know, remember Disney didn't have a great '80s run. I mean, there's some fun movies, you know, like Sword and the Sorcerer and stuff, or uh, not Sword and Sword and the Sorcerer. Uh, what you call? Um, God damn it. You know which one movie I'm talking about? Animated movie. It was like really dark and shit. Um, but yeah, I mean, Don Bluff had the American Tale. That was a big hit. Secret of Nim. Yeah, you know, it's, it, it sucks that um, that company kind of went under. <laughs> hey, you know, um, Len Kabasinski. Yeah, B movie enthusiasts. He knows his B movies. Yeah, filmmaker and director. I've had him on the channel. He's a great guy, very nice guy, and he's talented too. And uh, he uh, he he will probably pick Orca over Jaws. So if I ever do something like that, I'd have to invite him just to make the debate fun. You know. Yes, that's right. Dragon's Lair. Dragon's Lair two. What was the other one? Uh, Space Ace? Yeah. Oh, I watched a review on YouTube for um I think I think his name is Saber Spark. And he does nothing but animated reviews for animated properties. And he did a review for Balto. I've never seen Balto. I was always curious about it. I remember when the, the TV spots came out. I remember going like, wow, the animation looks really good. And he he finally watched it, reviewed it, broke it down, talked about the good and the bad of Balto. And he mentioned, he basically at the end of it overall, he said it was a, a great experience. Animation was beautiful. And it was a great movie, <clears throat> despite the flaws and the controversy that surrounded it. But God damn it, guys. Balto <laughs> came out. What was he? Was it a month? Two? It was like a month or two months. After, are you ready for this? Toy Story. Ouch. Ouch. 
I was like, God damn it. <laughs> Balto didn't even have a chance. They didn't even have a shot. Yeah, so, yeah, that was a wrap. I think, I don't know if Balto, I don't know if it was Balto or Titan AE was one of the last, or Anastasia. It was one of the later Don Bluth movies, and then he kind of retired. But, uh, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> it sucks. Balto may have had a shot to do decent. If a movie called Toy Story came out, that was a wrap. That was a wrap, man. It's like, damn it. <laughs> Yeah, he hated the sequels. <laughs> Saber Spark hated the sequels. He liked the first movie. Oh, Shawshank Redemption, that's a classic. Yeah. I have not seen these in so long. The only thing I remember is, you know, what I always sing on here on the channel, where there where there's a whip, there's a way song. <laughs> I'll never get rid of that song. You know, uh, it's just too much fun to sing. <laughs> but uh, I don't remember the movies. It's been so long. It's been like a long time since I've seen those. Chase is back. What's going on, Chase? Well, that's good. That's good that it did well on video at least. But it's like, damn. Because when Toy Story came out, that was the end. I think you'd, it was extremely rare you saw hand-drawn animation anymore. Like, it was rare you would see hand-drawn animated movies in theater. That was that was it. Everything. And you noticed we have not gone back. It's been CGI animated. Mation is mostly the dominant uh, form. I'm talking about mainstream theatrical released movies is what I mean. Um. Not in Japan, but I mean, you know, mostly over here. Majority of the animated films are CGI animated, you know? I think the last, I'm not positive, but the last hand-drawn, old-school style, which took forever to do because it's hand-drawn, old-school style, was a Japanese animated movie called um, Red Line. And uh, I don't think it did well when it came out, but when you look at the animation in Redline, it's insane. But I think that was, I think Redline was the last, as far as I know, I might be wrong, but that was the last hand-drawn anime movie that came out. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Why am I drawing a blank? <laughs> Why am I drawing a blank? I'll look it up right now. I'm assuming you mean the 1988 movie? Oh, ah, this looks frightening. <laughs> I know, but I see the first Narnia movie. That's the only movie I think I've seen. There was an animated one? I don't think I've seen that one, Heather. I don't think I've seen an animated version. Let's see. Russian film, Brat Are You, and 70s Horror House. Yes, the house is great. House, we got that on Blu-ray. I did not know that, Heather. Godzilla, was that the trilogy that was on Netflix? I think I I, I seen the first one, and then I, I was, like, interested. And then I got to the second one, and I think I just stopped. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember what happened. I think I just lost interest. What's up, Red Eclipse? What's going on, man? Yeah, man. A lot better than last week. I'm still recovering here and there, but uh, compared to last week, I've, I'm a lot better. Thanks for asking, brother. 
good to see you. We were having fun earlier, uh, Christopher. We were, everybody was in agreement that Rollerball 2002 is the greatest action film ever made. Like, there's no, there's no comparison. The Raid, Raid 2. It's all about some Rollerball. That's right. You know what? That John Wick wall scroll two in the back. I'm gonna take it down. I'm putting Rollerball. I'm gonna put a Rollerball 2002 wall scroll. Because I'm sure they're, I'm sure they exist. I'm sure I can just go online and, and order a Rollerball 2002 wall scroll. I'm sure, I'm sure they exist. Yes, yes, that's right. <laughs> <clears throat> Which movies are you talking about, Severio? Which ones? Space Jam 2 and SpongeBob? Oh, the Godzilla ones? Yeah, I just lost um I lost interest with the Godzilla ones. I just didn't fin finish it, so. That's right, yeah. It makes hard <laughs> Rollerball 2002 makes hard boy look like taking 3. That's right. I thought. I mean, I thought Ultimate Force was the the greatest action movie of all time, but yeah. You know. Nah, John Wick Four just it's not Rollerball. It's just not up to that level, you know. Even Sisu, Sisu, I'm sure Extraction Two, they're just, they're not Rollerball. Two. <laughs> I couldn't. I can't hold it. I. I. I, I tried. I tried. <laughs> See, that's what John Wick Four was missing. John Wick Four was missing, you know, that whole, you know, above shot action set piece where the camera is above and it's following all the action in the building. That all needed to be in night vision where you can barely see anything. See, they 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 need to learn from rollerball from the masters. That's right. <laughs> That's right. The raid series wishes it was rollerball. That's right. Two thousand two. <laughs> That's right. Let's see. Uh, the anime trilogy is, I like the story concept, but the execution was bad. I don't know what happened. I just, just really just lost interest and stopped watching. Oh, yeah, I saw that. He did a watch party for John Wick 4. I'm assuming he did not like it. I'm just going to throw it out there. I'm assuming he didn't like it. What's up, Rhett? How you doing, man? Good to see you. But yeah, Extraction 2 looks dope. I still need to uh, watch that at some point. But yeah, what, what's the date right now? Let's check it out. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Ooh, just got a message. Future badass, awesome interview coming. All right, awesome. Hopefully that works out. Okay. Is next Friday the end of the month? Let's see. Let me check the calendar real quick. Oh, wow. Man, this month went by quick. Yeah, so next Friday will be uh, the next action film autopsy episode with me and Rick. So we'll go into uh, we'll go into uh, Extraction 2 and Eye for an Eye and all that good stuff next week, next Friday. So make sure you guys are there. 
It is. That's right, man. For sure. Rollerball 1975 is garbage. But you know why it's garbage? Because you could see the action. <laughs> Who wants to see the action? No, man. You got to see Rollerball 1975. They should have zoomed in so where you can't see anything. And it's just this, you know, and throw in some night vision. That's how you, that's how you do it. And that's why Rollerball 2002 is the greatest action film ever made. <laughs> I need a mini fridge. <laughs> uh, that would be dope. You know, the coolest mini fridge I ever seen was, a, it was the Borg Cube from Star Trek. The Borg Cube. That was an actual fridge. And it lit up. And it was green and shit. Like it was all had lights. That was probably the coolest mini fridge I ever seen. <laughs> but, you know, you, you need money for that. Uh, Rollerball 2002 is, yes. Yes, favorite movie of all time. All right, Red Light Extraction 2. Nice. Yeah, they, they blew it. You could see the action. That's not how action movies work. It's supposed to be shaky cam and be zoomed in. <laughs> Top three all time. What are we talking about now? <laughs> now, see if they added the night vision. <laughs> yeah, this year has been the year of action. But don't forget, guys, seriously, eye for an eye. Not to be confused with the fun Chuck Norris movie uh, on High Yaw right now looks fucking sick. I saw the trailer for that and I was like, holy shit. The action in that looks so good. So that's on High Yaw right now. So don't forget, you can try High Yaw for free. When you when you just go to the site, you, you, you can do a free trial. Double pack, 4K double pack, special edition with posters. That's right. Both the movies, yes. Any TVs? Well, <laughs> I was waiting. You know, I, I kind of wanted to wait for Lady Fat to talk about it. I still might, but I'll just I'll just briefly do this. Um, we finished Barry. And I love Barry. I love the dark comedy. I love the serious tone when it was supposed to be serious. I love the action. I love the violence. The episode with Daniel Bernhardt is probably one of the funniest episodes for a TV show I've ever seen in my entire life. However, the last season was very underwhelming. Something was off. And I think they made a mistake when they did a time jump. That time jump was a mistake. And there were so many subplots that weren't wrapped up and finished. And certain characters that learned nothing by the end of the series. And it was kind of disappointing. I don't hate the show. It's not a Game of Thrones experience. <laughs> where I just wanted to burn. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I love the show. Uh, up to that point. So that's the last um, recent show we've just finished. So what's up, David? No, nah, man, it's uh, today was just a regular Blu-ray review. Friday is going to be the giveaways. So Friday, guys, stay tuned. You'll see it posted. There's some good ones this Friday. <laughs> so. Oh, OK, we're not alone. Yeah, it's just that the 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 had its moments. Especially with Fuchs. The Fuchs character was hilarious. It had its moments. But um, that time jump, we knew 
right after the time job, we, me and Lady Fat looked at each other. We were like, oh, no, I think we're in trouble. So I'm sure some people were, you know, probably think the last season was amazing and it was the greatest thing ever. But um, it's kind of a disappointment. And it sucks, too, because uh, Lady Fat got me into the show. And so when I loved the show, all the seasons up to the last season, I like were, I like was recommending it to other people. So those other people binged watched it, and they we all ended up watching the last season together, and even they were disappointed. And I was like, sorry, you know, I felt bad, like I made the goddamn show. But yeah, it's kind of kind of unfortunate. So uh hopefully last comic day is fun. You know, I haven't seen anything new yet. I know they're filming it right now. But yeah, hopefully it's a it's a fun movie. It's a fun little throwback movie. You know, it's got a lot of legends in it. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully it's fun. I mean, that's all we can expect, really. Hopefully it's a fun movie. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Again, you know, we might go in a little more detail with Lady Fat here because I'm sure she's going to want to <laughs> talk about some things. So. And this is why Lady Fat kind of stays away from shows <laughs> because of this reason. She says, like, this is why I don't watch TV shows. This is why I don't want to watch it. But she gave Barry a shot, you know. She um, just gave it a shot and ended up loving it. And then she she recommended it to me, and then I ended up watching it whether I caught up, you know. And it's a it's a it's an A plus show up until the last season. So, I mean, what are you gonna do? It's still not a Game of Thrones experience. I could still go back and remember fondly of, uh, you know, some great moments from the show. Like, put it this way. If I bought Barry on Blu-ray season, you know, every season, and then I bought the last season, and then I'd be like, well, that happened. <laughs> That's unfortunate. But I would still keep it. I would still keep the show, put it on the shelf next to the other shows. Game of Thrones, when that season ended, I sold everything. <laughs> I sold all the Blu-ray box sets. I got. I, I may have some figs I, get, I gave away, um, maybe some Funko Pops. There might be some shit in the garage that I forgot's in there. <laughs> but yeah, I was just like, I don't even want to look at it. Like, I'm, I'm good. I'm good, so... Let's see. That's why I feel shows should write outlines for all seasons. Yeah. I remember The Shield. I remember I used to watch The Shield. I remember being when it first came out, I remember it being pretty good. You know, it's funny, but we've recently got into, I know this is going to be like, we're going back into the ancient times. <laughs> we, uh, I've never watched Star Trek Deep Space Nine. It was another. It was something I wasn't really into. Like I, I grew to appreciate Star Trek later. I was always a Star Wars guy when I was a young kid and teenager and stuff like that. When I got older, I started to appreciate Star Trek. I understood it better. I understood the differences. I understood why Star Trek was special. Uh, but I never really seen uh, Deep Space Nine, and we've been recently rewatching that. And Deep Space, I understand now why the, the TNG era, the TNG cast will always be everyone's favorite. Picard, everyone. That's why the th third season of Picard, everybody loved that one because that's their favorite crew. However, I understand now why Star Trek fans say that Deep Space Nine is the best Star Trek show period i get it fan favorites the tng crew they love the tng crew but in terms of a story arc from the beginning season all the way to the end i see why they say star trek deep space nine is the best star trek show that ever came out i get it i mean we're we're on season um i mean it took a while to pick up when we get to the war when fuck it's deep space nine is fucking war it is war and I'm like, dude, this is amazing. Like, I wasn't expecting this at all. So we're on, I think we're on season six. And after that, season seven, and then we're done. But yeah, I get it. I get it now. So we're 
we're going back to old school. <laughs> so we're watching some old school series right now. So let's see here. Evil Kong being in the new Godzilla movie. I don't know. We'll have to find out. I'm, do I'm down for an evil Kong. Sure. Why not? Yes. I broke up with, <laughs> I divorced Game of Thrones. I see. Uh, Viking Samurai will be in the last game of day in it with a fight scene. How cool is that? I remember watching y'all about Inferno and Desert. Yeah. Yeah. I, I chit chat with David once in a while. Yeah, man. He's living the dream right now. I'm proud of him. Yeah. And then me and him were talking and I was, I was mentioning to him that his experience filming the last Kumite being on set, seeing the good, the bad and the ugly of filmmaking and being there, that's really going to, you know, help him eventually make his own movies. He's going to, he's going to, you know, get it a little bit of experience right there. So yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy for him. He's doing good. Mulan 2020. Oh, I all I had to do was look at the trailer to know that that's not for me. <laughs> Holy shit, that's right, right? Is it come on WWE? See, around that time, I was watching WWF. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but now, yeah, Star Trek: Deep Space Nine is legit, man. It's it's legit. There's death. People get fucked up. There's murder. There's people, you know, some of the high-ranking officers have to make hard, tough decisions and let people die or take people out. I'm like, dude, this is crazy, bro. This is Star Trek? Yeah. I was not expecting that at all. Oh, my God. I know, right? The big hit. That was probably the first time I saw him in something because I didn't watch Star Trek back then. Deborah. Deborah's cookies. You don't like Deborah's cookies? Rick Myers was comedy talking about Mulan. He's like, all you got to do is look at the poster. <laughs> He's like, all you got to do is look at the poster and see the actress on the poster not giving a fuck. That's all you need to see. <laughs> Rick is funny, man. Now you want beer? You want some beers? <laughs> oh, Batman. Batman... 1966 is so funny. It's so funny. I'm been thinking about it. maybe if there's like a Blu-ray box set of the A-Team. Uh, I might pick that up for nostalgic purposes. But I've been seeing clips of people posting scenes from Knight Rider. And I haven't watched Knight Rider since I was young. And I don't remember a lot of it. And I'm laughing hysterically. I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. This is amazing. There's like an episode where there's like an evil Knight Rider <laughs> and they battle it out. An evil Knight Rider had lasers and shit. And then at some point they, they jump in the air at each other and good Knight Rider just obliterates, just crashes right through evil Knight Rider and just punks evil Knight Rider out and it just drives off like a, like a, like a stud. And I'm like, man, I do not remember this at all. Yeah, it'd be fun to go back and re revisit the old school classic shows, but a lot of people are posting clips from Batman 1966 and it, I'm sharing them all the time to people because it's so funny. <laughs> like the last clip I see, it was like Adam went, Batman's just standing there and Catwoman's on the other side and Catwoman's like, I'm going to, don't come close to me, Batman. I'm going to, I'm going to do Cat Roddy on you. I'm going to do Cat Roddy. And he goes, ha, your mistake, Catwoman. <laughs> Cat Roddy, or correctly pronounced karate, only works as a counter, as a counterattack maneuver style. So as you could see, it'll only work if I attack you. But as you could see, I'm doing nothing. <laughs> and, then, and then Catwoman just gives up. She's like, oh, damn it. Well, she didn't say damn it, but she just gave up. I was like, I'm sharing that with everyone right now. This is hilarious. It's so funny, man. 
favorite Italian and French film? Oh my God, I'd have to, I'd have to go through that. I'd have to go through the list. Uh, but tomorrow again, we'll be reviewing a French movie, The Wages of Fear. Tomorrow we're going to be reviewing that, and that movie just blew my mind. <laughs> whiskey, more beer, more whiskey, more tequila, more beer. <laughs> What if Nick Nolte was Stone Cold? <laughs> I don't know. My voice is kind of gone right now. And that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. What? What? <laughs> that's all I could do right now. They're showing A-Team on cable. Oh, gee, right there. Cruel Jaws versus Jog. He's cruel. Cruel Jaws versus <laughs> Cruel Jaws versus Jaws versus Orca. Let's let's do it. <laughs> I saw I still I can't wait for uh, Shin Ultraman to come out on Blu-ray over here so I can eventually watch it. Uh, but I saw clips of Shin Common Rider, and it looked good. It looked it looked fun. <laughs> a little throw eight hours in there. <laughs> Your voice is already gone. <laughs> you know, a Shin Common Rider. I mean, I'm barely, barely trying to keep up with Ultraman. So, but Shin, but the original Common Rider, I would, I would love to get into that show, but there's so much of it. It's like Jesus, it would take me so long to, to catch up. But I might just, I might just jump right into uh, the Shin Common Rider just to see the movie. I'm sure it'll be fun. You know, Tokusatsu, represent. You know, as long as it's fun superhero action, why not? The Joker makes his own UFO. <laughs> what are we talking about here? Cruel Jaws versus Big Shark versus Trog and Japanese Spider-Man. All defeated by Rollerball 2002. Shin. <laughs> Where's Shin? <laughs> Rollerball. <laughs> The Hobbit, 1977. It's been a long time since I've seen those. I'm telling you, somebody needs to remix that. They need to bring that back. They need to bring back where there's a whip, there's a way. They need to remix that shit. Be fire. <laughs> Roll up all ways. With the night of with the art of night vision. Uh, where's the where's the Trog remake? That's what I want to know. No one wanted to no one wanted to remake Trog, huh? That was your first introduction. I'm sure that was a lot of, especially over here in the states. That was probably the a lot of people's introduction to Common Rider. Oh my God, I forgot about that. <laughs> Are you guys reading this? Are you you see this? This happened. The Joker makes a UFO. <laughs> That's how they rule the world. Yes. Yes. That's why that's why Batman 1966 show is the greatest show ever made. <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Rollerball 2002 needs 4K release. Steelbook. Special edition. <laughs> with, a, with a big, thick booklet. You know what be hilarious? In that big, thick booklet is tells you everything behind the scenes of what the fuck happened. <laughs> and that's all, that's all the first page. 
Rollerball 2002. What the fuck happened? You just read all the behind the scenes uh, ridiculousness that happened. <laughs> Chapter five, John McTiernan leaves the set. <laughs> he just walks off. <laughs> Rollerball needs a franchise. Yes. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's the original. And then there's future sport. It was like the bootleg TV version, of, you know, whatever. And then there was the remake. And then you guys, you could, you could actually count it. It's not in the same. Well, I don't think it would be in the same universe. But um, the last finale scene in Alita Battle Angel is literally rollerball. <laughs> it's literally rollerball, <laughs> except it was fun watching it in that movie. What's going on, Justin? Just got back from Roger Deakins Q&A. Oh, how cool is that? What a legend right there. Yeah. How cool. Nice. Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Again, we're really behind. <laughs> we're really behind. <laughs> on seeing movies we're like again like i said like our uh our live movie review catch-up is gonna be a lot of movies so i mean you guys know how much i enjoy john wick 4 so i mean that kick kind of kicked it off but there's been there's, there's other good action movies this year so a rollerball stream show Yeah, the only thing I've heard, but it's not confirmed, is there was little, literal sabotage behind the scenes where they wanted it to fail for some reason. Whether they had beef with John or they just wanted it to fail. But it, 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 And that's what happened. <laughs> it failed. <laughs> but it didn't fail at being the greatest action movie ever made. In the history of cinema. That's right. <laughs> don't you guys get it? Don't get any gag gift, guys. Gag gift ideas. <laughs> Trying to send us rollerball. <laughs> don't be hitting up Rob from ETN to give us a gag gift. <laughs> I should have I should have my buddy Kyle just set fuck it. I should just have him send it to me. He's never gonna watch it. He should just send me his DVD so that we have proof that this actually happened. A tax return job. <laughs> Could you imagine paying money and being in theater, sitting in the theater on watching on the big screen? An eight-minute long action chase sequence in night vision. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine being in theater and watching that for eight minutes? With with uh what was it? Wild E coyote sound effects. And I'm not making that up. Wild E I Wild E Coyote sound effects. For certain part of that chase sequence, Looney Tunes. What is happening? What is happening? Is Rollerball better than Trog? Rollerball uh, again. It's the greatest movie of all time. Favorite Godzilla collectible. Hmm. Uh, I'm gonna have to say, probably. Hmm. I'm going to have to say, I'm trying to see where it is. I don't see it somewhere over there. Probably my boy from, uh, hold on a second.
Let's see. I'll hold on to it. I was trying to find a picture to show you, but <laughs> it's somewhere. <laughs> Probably my uh, Final Wars, my Godzilla Final Wars uh, Chainsaw Arms Gigan. That's probably my favorite. <laughs> I could have got regular traditional, you know, Gigan, but uh, the Chainsaw Arms, man, got to do it. <clears throat> <laughs> No, nah, he won't. He won't because it's on Max for free. I don't want him wasting money. We're still not going to watch it, though, even if it's for free. Let's see. Uh, Bo, what's going on? Craven talk? No. Nope. You're just in time, actually. And I'm probably going to wrap it up in a couple of minutes, guys. But, uh, you know, I did the trailer reaction. And, uh, you know, the only thing Craven's got going for it is action stunts combat and it being gory and rated r that's literally the only thing it's got going for it <laughs> that's that would be the only reason i go see that movie is to see it for the gore and action and that's it because everything else in the movie is sus you know i mean some people in the comments were like it looks like a tv movie you know some people were like Oh, this looks cool. This looks badass. Some people were like, this looks like garbage. So it was very mixed in the comments of the trailer reaction I did. But I mean, I, I you know, Russell, a younger Russell Crowe with the accent would have killed it as Craven. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, kick ass got buff. So it's cool. He's, you know, he got the physique. I just don't see it doing uh, well. I don't see it making a lot of money. It would not have made it a better movie, but it would have helped the experience. <laughs> there's nothing worse. Th I mean, again, it still would have been a bad movie, but there's nothing worse than you see the vampire slash with his claws. You hear the blood come out of the neck and splash up somewhere. You hear the blood drip, but you see nothing. So in terms of, an, of watching the experience, Blood would have helped, <laughs> but um, it still still wouldn't have saved the movie. No, but again, you know, Sony man, if those Venom movies bombed, if those Venom movies did horrible, they probably would have killed this whole Sinister Six universe idea. But the Venom movies made money, so. Whether you love them or you hate them, they made money. <laughs> so. Uh, what's on Disney Plus? What are you talking about, uh, Severio? Oh, um, you talking about Avatar? Now, Avatar is on both. It's on Disney. No, we don't have Disney Plus anymore, but um, it's on Max, I believe. It's there, too. So. All right, Red Eclipse, have a good one, brother. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I'll definitely check out Sonic 3, sure. Yeah, it's weird. That's weird. They're on both. But that's the perfect time to escape any more Avatar 2 questions. <laughs> uh, the perfect segue out of here. Hey, 
this was a blast. Always fun hanging out with you guys, talking movies. Had a lot of fun today. Uh, don't forget to check out those links in the description box below so you guys can check out in a little bit more detail if you'd like uh, the game trilogy from Arrow and Warriors 2 from Arrow. Uh, both, I highly recommend both of those. Yeah, they're really good, really good shit. It's good shit. <laughs> they should put that as a review. They should put my name on the Arrow Blu ray. <laughs> Fat Samurai guy. It's good shit. That's my review. <laughs> That'd be great. That'd be great. Uh, but yeah, you guys are awesome. Thanks again for hanging out. And don't forget, uh, if you guys are free and you want to go back to 1953, join me and director Billy Hansen tomorrow at I think it's 5 p.m. Yeah, 5 p.m. Pacific. Uh, we're going to be doing spoiler talk, but it's okay. Come hang out. And uh, we're going to be talking about the wages of fear, which blew me away. First time watching that. So we're going to have fun talking about that French film tomorrow. And Friday is the giveaway. We have another live Q&A. We're going to hang out again. But you guys will have a shot to win some cool, badass Blu-ray giveaways this uh, Friday. Yes. So stay tuned. You'll see it scheduled and and uh, the goodies I have to, uh, to give out. So, all right, guys. You guys rock. If you guys are new here, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You're awesome. And I'll spin you later. Take care, guys. <laughs>